Hey, good evening. Welcome. How is everyone? It is good to see you. It is good to be seen by you. I, of course, am Bill Sylvie, a.k.a. The Dungeon Delver, and I hope you guys are doing absolutely wonderful this evening as I am. Uh, just, I, I'm here. We're here to have fun. Uh, you know, it's, it's going to be a good time. It's going to be a lot of fun here on Tuesday, and we have got a good lineup of of activities for you folks we're going to talk a little bit about stuff that's coming up stuff that's going on and we are going to play some first edition ad and d tonight that's right that is absolutely right uh greetings kabuki kid hello dungeon minister christopher sims borland uh finger um Unregistered Hypercamp, Left Hand of Darkness, Mod Hunter, Orbital Air, and all you other fun folks out there in TV land. And let me tell you something. If you're not subscribed to this channel, the hell is your problem? You think you're better than us or something? Uh, no, all kidding aside, um, hey, it's Scott Pyle. Less salty today. I'm never salty. What are you even talking about? Come on. I'm the easiest going guy on the internet. Um, but anyway, anyway, we have a lot of cool stuff coming this week, guys, and we have a lot of cool stuff coming next week. So, uh, tomorrow night, I, I don't know. I don't, uh, uh Jorge greetings. I, I, I don't know if Kyle is going to be here tomorrow night his you know he's he's dealing with the virus uh he do, he doesn't like it and I don't blame him so if he's just going to be tomorrow night like you know she she won't make it uh then that's fine we'll find something to do we'll 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 make fun is what we'll do um but Thursday Heidi Gygax and Eric uh, Garland are going to be here, and they're going to be talking about the next phase in the Gaxland RPG uh, uh, story that they're bringing us. And, of course, they have a Kickstarter going and everything. And guess what? They have made, they have hit their Kickstarter stretch goal. Yours truly, yours truly, uh, we'll be doing the first edition AD&D conversion for their module. An actual, not just like, well, here's what you can do. I'll have some homework to do. That's right. And I'm pretty excited about it, you know? Because I, I, I've said since I was knee-high to a grasshopper, I was never knee-high to a grasshopper. I was born. I was six feet tall. Um, no, I, I think having my name on a, on a product next to the, the name Gygax is pretty darn cool. And this opportunity that has come up, uh, is, is just, it's, it's amazing. It's simply wonderful. And I'm very excited, uh, to be a part of it. And I'm honored and I'm humbled that they've asked me aboard, but they're going to be here on Thursday and, and they're going to talk about the project and we're going to drink champagne and, uh, it's, it's going to, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, have I talked about the converting on the channel? Uh, I mean, yeah, <laughs> I, I had mentioned a couple times before, and I'm I'm talking about it now. Um, so that's this weekend, of course, Friday night. A little preamble, ramble, and then we'll get back into some Gamma World. Gamma World, uh, you guys seem to enjoy Gamma World, so we'll play some Gamma World um, next week. 
And I know normally I just I come up to Friday night and I'm like, and then we'll Friday and then we'll do the whole thing next next week, of course, Monday show, Tuesday show, Wednesday show, Kyle, maybe, maybe not. We'll have to see. Next Thursday, TSR artist, alumni, guy from back in the day, David S. LaForce, Diesel, DSL will be joining us on the show to talk about his art, um, his, his projects past, projects present, and projects future. So come one, come all. You don't want to miss that. All right? So that's David S. LaForce. And if you don't know who David S. LaForce is, honestly, get good. He has uh, a ton of great art. Uh, I have a couple of small David S. LaForce pieces. He was kind enough to uh, do some art in my um, uh, in my Deities and Demigods and in my Dungeon Master's Guide. I have original art by David S. LaForce. Yes, I do. So take him a hardback. Like if, if you know he's going to be at NTRPG or Gary Con or Origins or wherever he's going to be, and you're like, holy crap, that's David S. LaForce. D d you know, take, take him, take him a, a hardback book and he'll do a drawing in it. Uh, future people. People like years from now if he decides to stop doing that or charges you money for it i apologize but as of right now as of right now uh so i'm i'm excited about it i'm i'm really excited about uh about uh dave being here i've only spoken to david s laforce a couple of times um once when he drew in my uh dungeon master's guide and once when uh he drew in my uh in my um uh deities and demigods and so it is my sincere hope uh that we will we will find some some fun stuff to talk about because he he seems like a a really awesome dude so i'm i'm excited about that i'm excited about david s laforce being here and i hope you are too um but what else uh so all, all that's happening in the next couple of weeks, and I'll let you guys know if we have any more any more uh, updates happening. Uh, now, as for myself, as for myself, um, I have uh, I have I just some minor quality of life updates. Uh, I've got parts for the streaming PC coming in, and hopefully that will alleviate this robot uh, voice that you guys have probably been listening to for the last couple of minutes. Um, so yeah, I've, I've got some some upgrades coming uh, real soon. Looking forward to it. Hopefully that'll be awesome. Um, so yeah, we we've got we've got a lot of cool stuff in store. And listen, you guys, tell me. Now, the, the, we have a small enough community here, and I'm not doing the whole, oh, you know, nobody watches my show. That's not what I'm saying. But we have a small enough community here that things, you know, it's, it's not exactly like, you know, I, I don't steer the algorithm much, much. Back in January, from like January through to like mid-March, I, I did. Like, I could say things on YouTube and, and it would make YouTube take notice and the same on Twitter. It was, it was kind of hilarious, but, um, um, mod hunter, what are you talking about? There's no way to apply for any places for, an, uh, for the underground convention. Whatever are you talking about? Please let me know. Uh, but anyway, I, by the way, Mod Hunter, I will. I haven't put my games in the in the. Uh, I haven't put my games in the um, in the con grid yet. I know it's terrible of me. It's my own con, and I haven't registered for it yet. 
So fear not. There, there, are, there is still one dungeon master to uh, to sign up. Um. Thank you very much, oh, Mister Death Shadow. Uh, but anyway, uh, to to get back around. Um. So if I say, oh, I'm thinking about doing X. I, I don't really have to tell you guys. Don't, you know, don't don't tell anyone this because nobody's going to find out about. I, the, there's 19 of you out there, 18 of you out there, watching this live stream. If each of you told a friend, that would be 36 people who knew. Um. But I was thinking, what do you guys think? Because. You know, we've talked to Errol Otis. Tracy Lesh is a regular on the show. You've seen my interviews with Jim Ward, with Skip Williams, with, with uh, uh, oh gosh, uh, who else uh, have we talked to? Uh, Steve Marsh has been on the show. Steve Marsh, um, Darlene, Errol Otis. If he's game... A tidy IX, of course, but if if he's game, what what do you guys think maybe about if I interview Jeff Easley? Just just let me know. It's just an idea. It's just an idea. Yeah, Antonio, I know. I like to fool myself into it. Mod Hunter, uh, reach out to me. Uh, look down at the. Um, Look, look, look at the marquee crawl down there. Uh, shoot me an email directly. Shoot me an email directly, please. I will, I, I will hook you up. I will, I will help you out with that. Okay. Um, is that still? Uh, and if you're interested in the con, if anyone's inter interested in the con, I'm going to put this up on the screen. Now. Uh, some of you who are new here, do we get? Do we have a few folks uh, who've who've joined up, who signed up in the last couple of weeks? It's been a little flat, but that's okay. Um, but uh, one one thing uh, I, I I do uh, I I do want to tell you about. Is uh, now just I see all your your cheers of yeah get Jeff Easley on the show I, I all I can do is ask okay I'm not like best buddies with Jeff Easley and and can therefore just say Jeff come on my show I can't do that with any guests the closest I could do that with was I just told Paul he would be on the night. so it's just like I'll see you at eight tonight and he's like for what and I said for the show he's like. Oh, <laughs> so so to date, Paul is the only person that I've cast uh, a suggestion on successfully, right? But um, all I, it, I will ask if you guys want uh, Jeff Easley. Uh, oh, hello, Scott. Thank you for for joining up. Um, uh, if you guys want, I will reach out to Jeff Easley and see if he would be interested in in. Uh, joining us on live stream and then uh you know maybe after that maybe larry elmore you know um harold johnson i think is is on social media but we can do that so anyway moving uh moving along let's talk about the convention if you're new here and you don't know about the convention which scott Pyle. You might not know about the convention. Scott's like, what is this convention he's talking about? I can't travel. I'm taking the family to Disney. We're seeing the national parks. You know, the, the car needs, needs a new Framistat. How can I go to a convention? It's so easy. You see that link right there? It is an online gaming convention. The great underground online gaming convention. And this is the second one we've had. This is Guac 2. Guac 2. 
That sounds great, Robert. Uh, hit me up. Uh, contact info is in the crawl down there. My email, bsylvia gmail. Um, <laughs> camp out at your computer for three days prior. <laughs> just get, just get, just get, get one of the lay pastors to do. It's just like, it's got to be. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Padre. It's got to be on a Sunday. <laughs> oh, I can't make it. Uh, do, do you know, it's, here, here's my notes for the sermon. <laughs> sitting at home uh but anyway um the great underground online gaming convention what is it it is a virtual gaming convention that takes place over the internet through discord you sign up for games you sign up to dm games just the same way you normally would the cost to you is zero there is no charge for this convention you come you sit you play you game with friends um I, I I hope you you all will. I hope you'll sign up for games. We have a lot of fun stuff. We have an we have an advanced Dungeons and Dragons tournament with cash prizes. There are door prizes provided by Jack Photon, who is a, a big fan, big supporter of the show. Um, we have uh, we have um, Frog God Games is sponsoring the convention. Uh, another convention sponsor are, of course, our friends at Hellebard Games. And Hellebard is a show sponsor. Like, this stream is brought to you by Hellebard Games. And I'll do, I'll do their little ad plug here in a little bit. Don't worry, my friends at Hellebard. So, Hellebard, Frog God, an independent creator. Uh, the merch is made by the Dungeon Minister. That's right. We have a merch page you can go to look up the dungeon minister on teespring and you'll find all of the merch not just for this guac but for the previous guac as well so if you didn't go but you want everybody to think you're cool and that you did go you can get t-shirts pint glasses mugs dice bags sports bras i'm not making that last one up all kinds of fun stuff will be available at this con. All kinds of giveaways. Now, the merch is not giveaway. It costs what it costs, and you will see the prices there. I gotta get myself a nice pint. I gotta get myself a nice pint glass. Um, but there is a ton of free stuff, guys. There's a ton of free stuff. PDFs, uh, physical stuff. There'll be door prizes of things. And... Um, So yeah, yeah, you th th this this is going to be a, this is going to be a lot of fun. Sign up to run a game, sign up to play a game, sign up to play multiple games. Oh, and I almost forgot. I mentioned his name earlier. Uh Tracy Lesh will be uh this year's Artist Alley Artist Panel. Tracy will have merch. You'll be able to buy some Tracy Lesh art prints, some Tracy Lesh merch like his Diggin' Life mugs and beer steins. We are going to have so much fun. We're going to have so much fun. Guys, don't don't sleep on this because it costs you nothing and you don't have to, you know, if you want to get the full con experience, like sleep on your couch, just order pizza in all weekend, you know, just pizza and soda, stay up all night playing games. Stand outside your bathroom for like 30 minutes waiting to, to, to go to use it when you really have to walk back and walk like 300 times back and forth between like your computer area and your living room or whatever to get that full. I got, I'm over here. I got to go all the way over there. And if you're at Gary Khan, you know what I'm talking about. If you want a real convention experience, you can do that. Um, but, um, uh, do we we have some fun. Those of you who attended Guac last year, tell me. I'll just zip it. And if you're out there and you went to the Guac last year, did you have a good time? I I I, I won't attempt to influence your decision. You tell the people your your friends in chat who maybe they're just getting here. Maybe they're like, uh, uh, you know, may, may, maybe they just they they just signed up like Scott Pyle there. Um, you you tell them if you thought it was any good.
So you you do that. And 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 let people know if it was good, if the guac was good. Did I serve good guac? Now, you might find yourself in a beautiful car with a beautiful wife. You may ask yourself, well, how did I get here? You might find yourself wondering, uh, well, all this sounds well and good, Bill, but don't you think real conventions are the bomb? Uh, and they are. If my channel ever gets a... Um, ever gets 10,000 subscribers, 10,000 subs on this channel, I will have a, an in-person for real convention. I'll have to charge for it, right? Because I have a budget of zero, as always, a zero dollar budget. Um, so, you know, we'd, we'll figure it out. I'll figure out a venue. I think I'm pretty safe in making that threat that we'll have a, an in real life convention because... I'm not going to get 10,000 subscribers on my channel. Uh, but if it ever happened, uh, the, the guac, it would keep the name. It would, it, it would become the great underground overland gaming convention. Um, so I would do that. But for right now, we have the little, we have an online convention and it'll be a lot of fun. Uh, I mentioned earlier. I mentioned earlier that, of course, uh, our friends at Hellebard Games are the sponsor of tonight's live stream. And, of course, Hellebard Games makes the kind of adventures they'd like to play, whether it's for Castles and Crusades, 5th Edition, or the OSR. Old School is in play at the table with Hellebard Games. You can check them out at DriveThruRPG or on their website, hellabardgames.com and hellabard is currently clearing out their entire stock of fifth edition dungeons and dragons products with a sale that's right a sale um that's uh 50 off of every imprint 5e product they have in stock that's two locations with 10 supporting modules from a swamp filled with lizard men to a caravan route filled with adventure you will find something that suits your campaign use the coupon code 5e oop at checkout to receive that 50 percent off and for them for for those of you who are curious that 50 percent off that is that that basically makes it buy one get one free so don't miss out on that. Uh, and again, they're they're a sponsor of of the convention, and I'm I'm excited and and pleased to have them. Don McVitie, Lori McVitie are wonderful people, and they make great role playing game products. So you'll want to jump on that. Um, whatever you want to run, Antonia, whatever you want to run. Hang on a second. Let me make sure I read your name right. Antonio, sorry. I was not making fun of you. I literally have, uh, vision issues, but, um, You, you want to run AD&D, you want to run Basic Expert, you want to run OD&D, you want to run Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay, Gamma World, Star Frontiers, Top Secret, Boot Hill, Traveler, uh, Tunnels and Trolls, Homebrew. Just do it. Just do it. Just, you know, just, just bring your game. And let me know, again, contact info is right down there. Let me know if you want to be a DM. That is something that I have to turn on. That is, I, I have to like throw a switch in, uh, in Warhorn to make you a game master. Because being a game master lets you edit stuff in con information, uh, and they don't have it automated. Uh, you know what, Death Angels, if that's... If, if, if that's what you want to run, run it. 
I, I would ask you to please consider running something old school, but I'm, I'm not the fun police. Paranoia is a great game. Um, uh, Call of Cthulhu, any of that stuff. would be cool to get some of the old school tournament modules from the cons. It would, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? Um, I remember once I was talking to Gary about paranoia and I don't know if Gary got paranoia. He was like, Gary thought paranoia would have been a better game if it had been more serious. And I don't agree with that. I don't, I, 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 I don't, I mean, Merp, if, if you only want to have one round of combat, then Merp it is. Hero system. Look, I, I just just do it with an old school flair, you know. Greetings, Chris. Uh, Rollmaster, if you just want to get through explaining the characters to people who never played Rollmaster before. All right, and finally, that is how offensive and defensive bonus work. Well, guys, it's been a lot of fun. Thank you for attending. Somebody was it, it was um, Scott Hoover was telling me once upon a time, he and his then girlfriend went to a convention where some guy was running uh, Empire of the Petal Throne, the TSR Empire of the Petal Throne. And they had, um, you know, they, they had like a three and a half or four hour time slot. And literally two and a half hours of it was this. And it, it, it was just him and his girlfriend were the only people that signed up to play Empire of the Petal Throne. And the guy running it, who uh, I guess was one of M.A.R. Barker's group, took them on a two and a half hour journey of explaining the origins of their characters' names and their characters' names' meanings. Now that could have been that could have been an exaggeration on his part, but this fellow Scott is not really given to that much fabulation about this sort of thing. I ha I actually had the TSR EPT set because I thought it would be good to have to, to bolster od and It was not. It was not. Um, I mean, imagine, it's, and I know a bunch of you guys out there are going to be like, that would be awesome. But imagine if, like, the first 20 pages of The Lord of the Rings, Tolkien had written in Quenya, you know, with just with no explanation at all, and then, like, the rest of it was in English. Not like, you have to go in the back of the book to look at the index to figure out what I said. So, yeah, it, it, it was, um, it, it was, it was out there. Yeah, no, the, the, the K5K, that is exactly it. Con games require go, 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 go. I mean, I, I at Gary Con, I was playing, uh, a, Castle Greyhawk game being run by Alan Grohe. And at the end, my character drank. Uh, we It was like getting close to midnight. We had been playing, I think, since 8 o'clock. And my character, a, a female half-elven bard, finally, I was just like, I am going to use the oil of etherealness, and I'm just going to start clipping through because the, the the party was like puzzling over something and I'm just like 
I, I announced it. I said, I'm covering myself with oil of etherealness. And I I'm like, I, I'm just, I, I'm advancing. What do I see? What do I see? What? And I finally got to the end room and I felt terrible. Like I called Alan when I got home because Alan Grohe and I are friends. Um, but I, I, I called Alan uh, and I was like, I feel terrible that at the end I no clipped and speed ran through your dungeon. And he said, don't be, you guys have the stuff to use. You know, you have it to use and to come to a successful conclusion. And, you know, so that's what we did. That's, you know, that that's what I did. And it, if you give your characters a potion of flying, because you've got a 200 foot cliff, you know, and it's as smooth as glass and not even a thief can get up it, then they need to be using the potion of flying and not spending two hours trying to figure out like, well, We'll chip holes in it, and then how long is that going to, you know. Con games require go, go, go. Not four-hour sessions of linguistic background for your homebrew world. I mean, the K5K is absolutely right. Yeah, Mod Hunter, you're right. And it, it's it's very simple. Um, you know, don't die with a full quiver at a convention game. You know, and don't don't bitch that your favorite character died or whatever. It, you you don't you don't have uh Morgenkainen, you don't have Big B, you don't have uh you know Sir Robilar. You 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 have a one-off character. It, it's fun to think in terms of role playing, but at a convention, it is a one shot. Maybe it's a two shot. Maybe you'll come back after supper, or you know, the first game is is Wednesday or the first game is Thursday, and your characters will be playing another session on Friday or Friday and Saturday or Saturday and Sunday, or some mix thereof. But the reality is that a con game. A con game really does make it a war game. I mean, you, you definitely role play, you know, definitely get in, into playing your roles as much as you want. But, you know, always fire in a melee when Jim Ward is your team, <laughs> particularly if you have a uh, if you have a protein disruptor, fom fom fom, <laughs> little uh little metamorphosis alpha joke there incredible <laughs> i would have loved to have seen a, an oiled half elf woman bard clipping through my wall i think we all would have that's why your mom was so freaked out about dungeons and dragons in the 80s not because of satan but because of that she read about oil of etherealness and and uh, half elf women bards. That that was what she was afraid of. The typical session length for con death angels. Um, I'm doing four hour slots. If a game master's session ends ninety minutes in, that's fine. But I'm ostensibly setting out, setting aside four hour time blocks. Uh, it doesn't surprise me, Trace. Uh, by the way, I, I'm glad you mentioned that. Uh, I'm back to doing content videos during the day. Look, they might not get a lot of hits, and people are like, are you going to talk about Wizards of the Coast raising prices? And I might, but it's kind of cold old news. Um, Dungeon Minister, which half do you prefer? And Mom did not like the Sphinx boobs in the Monster Manual. No, she didn't. Why does that woman have four legs? Why are her breasts out? Why does she have wings? It's complicated, Mom. Just don't let her see Honey Wells, the uh, succubus there. But anyway, um, 
So yeah, so so contents coming in today. I dropped a Tales of Tabletop Triumph, uh, which was uh, sent in by Lightmane. Eighteen minutes long that one, and boy did I ever have to fight with our friends the uh, the the editing software to get that one to work. And I apologize it took so long, but yeah, I've got a video. I've got another video coming tomorrow. I'm going to talk about some fun stuff, but I'm not. I'm not going to tell you guys what it is. I don't want to spoil it. Um, but as far as, as far as, first of all, Paizo doesn't create Dungeons and Dragons. I, I know a bunch of you probably just got mad and got ready to click on subscribe on my videos. I, I get that. Uh, but Paizo doesn't create Dungeons and Dragons. Nothing Paizo does affects me. And it was kind of funny when Wizards of the Coast, uh, went, you know, full pogrom on on the D and D fans starting back in January. Um, so many people I was saying, you know, I was saying, and I have said, and I'm going to say that, um, yeah, I, I don't support wizards of the coast and what they do. I do support dungeons and dragons. Those are separate things to me. All right, because to me, this is Dungeons and Dragons. This is Dungeons and Dragons. This, th these books from the 70s and 80s and even the 90s, if you so feel compelled, um, those are Dungeons and Dragons. So when I was saying, yeah, F, you know, screw D and D, the heck with D and D, and I was getting in the comments and messages on social media, people saying, sorry, I've got an itch, uh, people saying. Yeah, Pathfinder 2E, Bill. And I'm like, no. Because <laughs> I'm I'm not I'm not a fan of Pathfinder. It's third edition on steroids. And all the problems, the many, so many problems mechanically and feel-wise that, that come with it. But Paizo no more steers Dungeons and Dragons than Frog God games. Or Hellebart, or uh, you know, uh, any any game system that is not them. So Paizo dropping drought, I don't care. I literally don't care because they're not D and D. They're just some house ruled third edition third party. Let them drop drought. So what? Bring them back in. Piss them off. Just do that. You want Drow in your game? Use Drow in your game. You want obsidian-skinned, silver-haired, evil elves that live underground, exist solely to worship spiders, kidnap and torture and murder humans, and try to take over the world, enslave people, just do all kinds of terrible things, then put them in your game. Don't worry about Paizo. Don't worry about Wizards of the Coast. Just keep using them. Remember how when Wizards of the Co or when uh, TSR, you know, the moral majority got its hooks into TSR and they said no more assassins, no more half orcs. How many of you followed that edict? Show of hands. Show of hands. Now take that hand, if you raise that hand, and hit yourself with it. Now do it again. Go <laughs> with Dunbar and worry, worry about Bethesda. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Greibel has half elf, uh, half elf orcs just out of spite. <laughs> Old school essential. No, I never did an unboxing of OSE. I should do that one night. I should do that one night. Do you guys want? I have an OSE. I have the big car battery sized OSE box. Uh, I've never looked at it. 
It, it literally, a, a friend of mine gave me his vast collection of RPG materials before he moved to Chicago. Thank you, Volcano God. Uh, and in and amongst that was a complete set of OSE. Do you guys want an OSE boxing one night? GM Jacko. All right, I will. Now, when I say unboxing, Certus, it is not sealed, okay? It's not like it's just been sitting there not unwrapped. It, it is, uh, it, in fact, when I got his, when I got the collection, some of the books were already out. I actually had to go online and look up what went in the box because there was some stuff in the box, but there was some stuff not in the box. So I had to go online and to, to properly put the box back together because I didn't want to accidentally sell some of the contents of the box and then have a weird incomplete box. So I just thought if I ever wanted to, uh, you know, wanted to part with it, I wanted to be able to say it's complete. Um, a 5e box just be, but I, I, I sold the two linear feet of fifth edition to someone. I got, a, I got a very nice chunk of change. I only charged like 35 bucks a book some of the books i knew were worth more and i charged more accordingly but i di yeah, I, I had a stack of 5e books like, like if you go like, like this of 5e books i don't have them anymore even the starter set even the starter set i got rid of one does not simply unbox OSE material and not roll up again well perhaps we can do that perhaps we can do that um but what I'll do is uh, I'll set up both my cameras and you guys will get multiple views and then, you know, you'll have a camera on me and everything like that. And uh, we, we, we will proceed apace, as they say. Um, and and I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it when I, but I'll do it like, uh, so Jeff Easley is going to be here next week and Heidi and Eric are here this week. So maybe a couple of weeks out just before, uh, just before we do, um, we do the convention or, or I can just do a video just like, a you know, uh, OSE, what is it? What, what comes with it? Unless this is like some weird box that like they, they only Kickstarter. I have the, uh, swords and wizardry box set that comes in an O a, a faux, original Dungeons and Dragons wood grain box that is almost the size of the OSE box that it too is the size of a car battery. Um, and I thought about doing an unboxing of that, but that thing is unobtainium. That would just be cruel. That would be like opening a wood grain OD and D set. I mean, if you can find the wood grain, uh, uh, swords and wizardry sets, apparently they're, they're quite expensive. Um, not wood grain OD and D expensive. Those things go for literally tens of thousands of dollars these days. Um, and you make a valid point. Uh, there have been endless enclaves of good drow. There are good drow mentioned where drow are first ever mentioned as a society. And Luther Pendragon gets so angry when I bring it up to uh, also. But the, the rakes in Airly Sinlu, the rakes that you can encounter are not wholly given over, over to chaos and evil, which tells me chaotic neutral and chaotic good. Um, I think I'm missing some of your comments here, here guys. I apologize. I'm probably also going all robot-y on you. Um, so what else? What else is going on? Uh, so, so yeah, we'll, we'll do an unboxing of that a couple of weeks from now. We'll just take a Thursday. I'll just, like, just mark it off. Uh, you know, unboxing for whatever. OSE. 
I don't know um, what uh, what what is in that OSE. I don't even know what OSE is, and that that's that brings me to another point. Is you know, I, I mentioned people saying, well. You know, yeah, down with D down with with wizards and down with new D and D. Absolutely, yeah, Bill Pathfinder. And I'm like, no, <laughs> no, that's 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 not it either. Because um, you're you're just you're just playing a lot of third edition. Um, but some people have said, yeah, just play OSE, Bill. I don't even know what it is. I don't even know if it has the faintest touch of AD&D or d d in it. You know, I, I don't know what you're suggesting to me. There was a, there was a stretch from, like, the creation of Swords and Wizardry going all the way back. Now, I'll tell you guys something. I was there. I was there when Osric was made. I was there when Osric was made. Um, my name is in the Osric rules as a creator. I, I made like three monsters, snakes, sphinxes, and and uh, spiders. That's that's literally my total contribution to Osric. But I, you know, I, I, I happen to be around. You know, I'm guy in crowd number three. I'm I'm right at the bottom of the credits, but I am I am in the credits. Um, but the uh, the thing when Swords and Wizardry came out, and people latched onto it, and people realized that what Matt and Stewart. Matt Finch and Stuart Marshall and all the guys who actually put actual brain power into Osric had done was they dynamited that concrete dam the Wizards of the Coast was keeping old D&D &D behind and then just said, come at me, bro. And of course, the cat's out of the bag. There's nothing that Wizards of the Coast can do, despite their attempt back in January to stop it. It's it's out there, and it's going to be out there forever. Sort of them literally suing every person. I don't think they're going to do that. I don't think they're going to do that. Um, but there there was a, there was a period there when it seems like. Every kitchen sink press was releasing some tweaked variant of original Dungeons and Dragons. There were so many just just just, just little variants on it. So many people jumped on it and rode its coattails out into the hobby space that people are like, "Oh, I don't play Dungeons and Dragons. I play uh of uh, 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 micro white box." What the hell is that? It's everything you need just uh, just on a single five by seven card. Really, that's all you. Need. There was like this reductive race to be the least uh, robust and least full rule set. Everybody chased this Ur Dungeons and Dragons idea around, and it was kind of funny to watch. I was like. You need to stop trying to reinvent the wheel, guys. You... But but people just wanted to j just just uh, take care, Dungeon Minister. Thank you for stopping in. Um, maybe they're great for you, Ricky, but they're not great for me, and they're not great for me to run, and they're not great for a, a, a large number of people, which is why AD&D is and and will be uh, uh, more popular than those for a long time. Because um, the, 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 you know, the, the, the reality is, is the, 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 the it, it is an amazing system. I, I still play it. I still love it. And it was, it, it, it just kind of amused the hell out of me to, to sit back again and watch from like 
I don't even remember because I got to tell you from 2011 to 2018 is a pretty dark time, but from the creation of Osric until just a few years ago, when people stopped uh, trying to, you know, it, it, it was like, it was, it, it was like a bizarre version of name that tune, you know, I can play that D and D in, in three rule books. I can play that D and D in two rule books. I can play that D and D with chain mail and my own made up ideas. And it, it, perhaps it was a logical reaction. You know, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. The nineties, the, the, I would say from the mid-late 80s, from like 87, probably to 2000, maybe 99. If you weren't in the gaming scene back then and you haven't looked in that period, let me tell you what, you could build a house with the crazy number of overly complicated, just ridiculous, ridiculously complicated rule system. Every company seemed hell-bent on building a more complex rule system than the people who came before them. I mean, there is nothing simple about Twilight 2000. Character creation, man-to-man -man combat, vehicle combat, the first Mech Warrior RPG, the second Mech Warrior RPG, Cyberpunk, Hero System. They're all massive, complicated role playing game systems. So, what, what I'm saying here, what I'm getting at, is the race to, to, <laughs> um, Stop making fun of space opera. <laughs> I'm sorry. Cool and wins. Cool and wins the internet tonight. <laughs> oh my god. Shadow Run. Renegade Legion Legionnaire. Yes, there was an RPG. Renegade Legion actually had a pretty big splash for its time. People don't realize this, but there were two computer games, a role-playing game, the man-to-man -man combat game, the tank combat game, the space combat game, the strategic combat game, and the uh, the starship combat game. There, there, there were a lot. There was a lot for that. Um anything palladium related the point being the, the 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 point behind this polemic of mine is that perhaps the micro whatever drive from the mid early 2000s when osric hit and game designers realized oh shit yeah we can clone dungeons and dragons ha <laughs> I'll just say it's a clone of uh, a clone or a variant of Osric or a clone or a variant of Swords and Wizardry. Um, the 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 drive I think may have been to shake that dross off, may have been to remove those bulky layers and breathe a little bit freer. But there's a difference between taking off a winter coat and uncomfortable shoes and slipping on some shorts and a t-shirt and just just you know, walking around in a banana hammock. There's <laughs> a vast difference between those two things. And I think with some of those reductivist uh, role-playing games, uh, you, you, you wound up going towards the mankini, which is nobody wants that. Nobody wants that. So, um, you know, when people are like, uh, again, you know, AD and D is too complex. I play, Swords and Wizardry. No, Swords and Wizardry is too complex. I play White Hack. White Hack is too complex. I play the, you know, just down to the point where it's, uh, you know, you've got an RPG called Me Have Stick. You know, and there, there are some people who think the de the declarative article is is overcomplicating the rules and just want to call it Me Stick. So that's that's just that's just my two cents on it, and I I don't I, 
I'm happy here. All my stuff is in here. I'm happy here. All my stuff is in there. If you're happy in Morborg and you like things where it's literally just everybody rolls 1d6 periodically only when I tell them and I don't tell them what it's for and you can die of typhus if you cross the street the wrong way, more power to you. That's awesome. That's awesome. We'll see you, RPG Grandma. Be well. Can I tell you where you can purchase a copy of me have stick? <laughs> uh, I'm going to write, I'm going to write me have stick. I am, I am claiming copyright on that right now. Tonight, I'm going to sit down and write me have stick. Uh, dread the Jenga RPG. I, I will issue a PDF of me have stick. Uh, I will charge for it. Um, but anyway, so that's uh, rock advanced stick. You have rock, you have advanced stick. Rock is advanced, uh, is advanced me have stick. <laughs> Are you, yes, I will, I will run a game of me have stick there. I am, I am proclaiming it right now. Uh, I will, I will register and run me have stick. Um, I will warn you, you will need at least five minutes to play me have stick. All right. Make sure it's not going to wreck the rest of your schedule to play me have stick. So me have stick uh, debuts play test uh, will be purchased and then will end and become out of print all in the space between now and the con. Rock for power gamers stick for true grognard. Yes, uh, so between now and Guac, me have stick uh, will, 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 I will write it, I will print it, I will publish it, um, you can buy it if you want, and uh, I will mail it to you, and then it will be out of print after that. So just get ready to play me have stick at the con. It could take five minutes. It could take 10 minutes to play me have stick. And look, I don't want any news. I don't want some Pat pulling mom to come at me and say me have stick cause son hit friend stick. If that problem, that, that you problem. No, no Sue Delver for me have stick LARP. Delver no approve me have stick LARP. Death Angel introduce ridiculous house rule. No one want play that Death Angel. Jorge Wright, this be I I I put autograph on copies me have stick. GM Jocko, uh, Stickmaster put foot down. No allow power gamer sharpen stick. It's spirit of game, not letter of rule, which matter. No allow power gamer bar barracks room lawyer dictate rule you. I'm going to stop. This is, get this is getting stupid. <laughs> Everybody in the back room's yelling at me to shut up and start to start the A D and D game.
All right. So without further ado, now uh, I did. I do want to mention something. The streaming PC is very creaky. Uh, I apologize in advance. Yes, Venger, Treehouse Castle, Cave Castle. That that for advanced high level stick. When established strongholds. Just going to make a quick note of something in case I forget. Okay, so as we know, again, guys, the uh, uh, the old streaming PC here is very creaky right now. So I apologize in advance if uh, we chug a little bit tonight. I have the minimum amount of stuff open. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and welcome in our players. Uh, and we have a new player joining tonight. You guys will know this guy if you uh, watch our live streams of uh, Gamma World on Friday nights. This is Kevin, and uh, Kevin's joining us tonight. Gre uh, greetings, Kevin. How are you? Hello. I'm great. How are you? Wonderful. I'm doing great. And uh, uh, here is uh, TK. Of course, we're all big fans of TK. He always brings a certain flair to the table. Whether he's lighting himself or other characters on fire, say hello to Sir Standard. Hey, yo. I just finished my master's degree. Woohoo! Yeah. Congratulations. That's pretty major. Awesome. Circle gets a square and TK gets a shout out. Uh, and speaking of sticks, we have Baron Von Headbanger as Elmer Sticky Fingers. Mobius as. Daron. Yeah, how's it going? Uh, joining us not for the first time as a player in the session, but for the first time uh, with a character in this particular part of the game is, uh, of course, you know him, you love him, Mark, who is running Grimsby. Grimsby. Yeah. And last and absolutely not least, Vrug Dorn, the half orc played by the one, the only Doomsword Deathmaster. Uh, so let's just jump right into it now for those of you who are not following along the party has come to a keep that is located on a borderlands nearby are some caves that are chaotic the party has entered those and is locked in mortal combat with some kobolds with uh elmer sticky fingers living up to his name by hanging on the edge of a fiendish trap pit fighting off a couple of kobolds. Uh, there are still three kobolds in the mix and four giant rats. We're at the top of the order. Um, uh, Kevin, Tanstel has followed uh, your adventuring friends who had managed to just get a slightly ahead of you. Have you bought all your equipment for Tanstel and everything? I have, yes. Okay. Uh, so... Uh, Catching up with your friends, you're told that, yes, they headed off for the Caves of Chaos just a couple of hours ago. I'm sure you can catch them. So you manage to uh, follow the road fairly easily, which is good. And um, standing there in the mouth of the ravine, you hear the distant sounds of battle. Yes, kobolds, the scum of the dungeons. Um, uh, yes, so you can see... On the right hand, perhaps 200 feet down the ravine, there is a cave opening, and you hear the clash of arms within it. So we'll start with you. Kevin, what do you wish to do? So I'm two 200 feet up. Uh, uh, you are 200 feet from this cave entrance on the right-hand side of the ravine at ground level. Um, well, it's it's time to run. I'm going to yes. run towards the cave face open okay cave opening. uh all right so going ass over tea kettle it will take you uh a round let's see uh what what it, what is your move? so it's 12 it's oh okay yeah so it will it's 120 feet yep. and then well you're charging so double that so yeah you can yep. get there in in this round because you're not actually going through a dungeon you know you're you're actually 
running. Um, meanwhile, locked in combat, Sir Standard, what do you wish to do? You're muted if you just told me. I didn't I didn't catch it. I loathe when I do that. Um so last time there weren't any in melee range of me, correct? That is correct. None in melee range with you. One of the men at arms is currently fighting three rats that had attempted to attack the fallen man at arms. I will continue to put two arrows in anything I can. Okay. Um, Elmer, hanging on the edge of the pit, fighting against two kobolds. Are you continuing to swing? Well, I got one of them. One left. Oh, that's right. Yes, I'm going to swing at this one for sure. Okay. Uh, Duran, Mobius, what do you wish to do in the round? Uh, I'm moving forward to uh, or towards the other man in arm. It's still okay. All right. Uh, Mark, how about Grimsby? Where am I? Am I with this lot? Uh, you are currently with uh, with Tanstall, oh. uh, moving up. Yes, that's exactly what I'm doing. Okay, so you guys will uh, arrive at the end of this round, and Vrug Dorn in the thick of it. What is Vrug doing? Yeah, yeah, he's unconscious. Yep. In the thick of the floor, of course. I I knew that. <laughs> yes, he's a, he uh, he ended up at exactly zero hit points. Just I, okay. as a reminder. Doom Sword, I think you meant to say that you're at full health and that the DM completely forgot and that you're actually level five. <laughs> Quiet, yo. Oh, hey, how about level six? That'll work. <laughs> I wasn't going to be greedy. Don't push it, man. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right. uh, so we'll start at the top of the order. Kevin, please roll initiative for us, if you would. Of course, we have our lovely on screen dice rolling tool, which will hopefully I said not. Right for this? Uh, that is correct. All right. Did it roll? It did. Awesome. Okay. Yes. Uh, Six and a three. So oh, the party first. Yes. Uh, Tanstall and, Crim and Grimsby, you uh, run up, and as sure as, as uh, Heronius made little blue lightning bolts, when you look into this tunnel, you see a party of adventurers fighting with kobolds and giant rats. Missile fire goes first. Fire your first arrow, sir. Standard. Are you shooting at a kobold? Or are you shooting at a? Doesn't matter. Sorry, <laughs> I rolled. I just rolled. I rolled them both. Uh, my first one is a miss, regardless, and I'm pretty sure my second one's also a miss. But uh, um, to answer to answer your question, I am less worried about the kobolds than I am the giant rats. Understood. Understood. Uh, now come melee attacks, and I know, uh, of course, uh, Baron von Headbanger has been waiting all week to to hack and slay and slash. So, all right, <clears throat> here we go. This is uh... a D attack. Said everyone attack. <laughs> all right, I got to remember the plus one versus kobolds. Here we go. Oh, 17. All right. Yeah. So you. Thrust your sword into him as you hang there on the edge of the the uh, the, the open pit, yawning below you. Uh, roll some damage. All right, uh, short sword, one d six, right? That is correct. Oh, not great, but I'll take it. <clears throat> Two, three. Uh, let's take a quick look, and hopefully, hopefully, ye old uh, streaming PC doesn't catch on fire when I do this. Um, with all the money you make from your new RPG system, you should be able to buy a new one. Oh, of course. Me, me have stick, big hit. <laughs> okay. Yes, that's the point. Uh, big hit with stick. All right, so you, you slash him across his belly as he leans out with his spear, and with a gurgling cry, he just vaults over you and lands dead with a thud in the pit. Yes. Okay. Um, I think we're now over to uh, Duran. I think it was in range of me. Uh, there is. Yeah, I mean, you guys are close enough that you, that you can move up and fight the some of the four remaining giant rats. Yeah, I'm going to give uh, the closest one to me a whack. 
vermin. Oh, I don't know why it rolled two. Hold on a second. Uh, well, at any rate, neither one is successful. So <laughs> my, my other arrow hit AC nine. So what are the odds? Both twos. Oh, that one got close to the rats. It just you know just sort of skits off the floor and uh, drug doom sword unconscious. Uh, that's right. So you lie there. And think okay, so uh, kobolds are dead. I have four rats. Three are engaged when the man at arms. One will, uh, let's see. Um, one is going to try and uh, bite. Oh, I think. I think Duran. So we'll go ahead and resolve that now. Uh, that is a 16, which is going to be a successful bite. Ouch. And, uh, well, I mean, the good news is you're only going to take uh, a couple points of damage at worst. Bad news, you might die of typhus later. Exactly so. Uh, all right, so that's two points of damage. Um, three rats on the lone man at arms, who is armor class seven. And we'll just go... One, two, three. And they all miss. All right. Okay. So in the next round, uh, behind you, you hear the, the, uh, the footfalls of uh, folks approaching you from behind. That is from the outside. Um, Tanstall and um, Grimsby, yes, you round the corner just in time to see a sword thrust up from a pit, slash a uh, kobold over the belly, and he kobold tumbles into the pit. Uh, there are four giant rats uh, meleeing and, and uh, uh, fighting. There is a man down on the floor. There is a gnome painfully pulling himself up out of a pit, although I don't want to speak for Elmer if uh, that's not what he's doing. No, that's what I'm doing. <clears throat> Alrighty. Um, so, Kevin, what is Ton still doing? Uh, you know, I'll run towards the fallen friend, and I'm going to attempt to bandage him, if possible. Uh, Alright. I have uh, bandages, so... Uh, Sir Standard... What is thy action? Now, I would point out, just in case you're curious, TK, the the giant rats are within... You can move to the giant rats if you would prefer to try and melee them in this round. I have an AC5, five, 5 hit points, and no melee weapon proficiencies because you're level 1 and you only get 1. So, I have my bow. My bow is that. You get more than one proficiency. Well, you get you get one as a fighter, right? And then I would get one as a magic user, which is useless. No, you get four as a fighter. You should get yeah. four as a fighter. Okay, cool. So then, well, yeah, okay. So then I am proficient with the sword I carry. Huzzah! Um, <laughs> I was carrying it anyway. Um, well, I have an AC five and five hit points. That's more than the guy on the floor, so. No, I'm going to continue using my bow. Okay, fair enough. Um, Man at arms is uh, is is slashing out with his sword. Um, uh, what is Duran doing? Is he going to melee with uh, one of the remaining four giant rats? Uh, he sure is. All right, Mark. What about Grimsby? Is it possible to get uh, in melee with the rats, perhaps from behind when they can't see me? Um, not from behind, but you can get up and, uh, and, and melee them. I will do that. Okay. Grimsby pulls out his two daggers. Vrug is in. going to contemplate the universe. So, uh, Sir Standard, that is TK, roll initiative for us, please, if you would. Yep. Let's see. I got a whopping two. That's okay. We tie. Missile fire goes first. So, uh, the... Simultaneous. Uh, 
Well, the rat's natural weapons are faster than than anything, so we'll go ahead and do those. This is on the men at arms. Uh, one of them does hit the man at arms. And inflicts three points of damage. He like, screams and shakes the thing off and kicks at it. I'm pretty sure uh, he's down. The Yep, he's down. He's at zero. Ooh, okay. So he is he is unconscious. Uh, the remaining rat is going to uh, leap on Duran and try and gnaw on him. Whoops, not 2d20. 1d20, just the one. Uh, I don't think that'll be sufficient to hit you. So let's go ahead into uh, counterattacks, please. Missile fire if you are shooting uh, into the fracas. Yep. Okay, so that's a uh, 15 total, which is AC5. That will absolutely hit one of the rats. All right, and. and Exceptionally, it should kill him. Well, nope. do I give him uh, fewer hit that, points? That may be an edge case. That may be an edge case. Let's see. Uh, nope, that skewers it, uh, and it, it squeaks and squeaks no more. Uh, you may fire when ready, Gridley. Who's Gridley? <clears throat> <clears throat> Did you fire? Did you fire your second arrow? Uh, I will. I didn't know if there was any other miss missile fire for the round. Uh, no, as far as I'm aware, there's not. Uh, no, that catches air. Okay, but you did. You did slay one of them outright. Um, next along, Elmer Sticky Fingers. You pull yourself up out of the pit in this round. To uh, run. Do something terrible to this rat, please. All right. So it's what more to the staff. Subject to what? Congress. Does not work. Um, Grimsby, you lean over this fellow who is obviously a half orc, uh, but he was fighting kobolds and giant rats, neither one of which are particularly nice critters. So uh, he's probably on the side of good. Um, let's go ahead then and get declarations because I know what the rats are about to do. Uh, Tonstall is there. Kevin, are you going to melee? If I've bandaged... Uh the downed guy yeah uh otherwise i'll do what i have to if i if i didn't finish bandaging last round oh that was ton still doing bandaging yes. i'm sorry yes. mark with grimsby meleeing yep. yes oh okay yeah uh, may, i'm sorry make your attacks i got okay. you guys okay no, no worries. he's using two daggers uh 15 will hit uh armor class of six okay but you are fighting. Uh, you, you're fighting two-handed. So I have a 19 what? dex. So they're zeros. Ah, both okay. of them are, are at zero. So unfortunately, your 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 bonus to hit uh, that only applies to missile weapon with high dex. The bonus to hit yep, in melee comes from strength. Okay. Uh, so does uh, does hitting a, a, an AC six work? The AC six does hit though. Good. Shank. That is a D four. Three points. That is enough to kill the rat. Uh, the rat is dead. There's a rat in the dungeon. What am I gonna do? Maybe it'll make good eating. <laughs> okay. Any more melee this round? Elmer pulled himself up. Uh, Mobius, uh, you swung on and missed. Uh, Sir Standard, you fired already. Uh, Kevin, I you. Got my, I got my one. Yep. You got did, did I, did I, I didn't roll my second one, though, did I? Yeah. No, you didn't. Okay. I'm not used to having two attacks. That one's not any better. 
Skip. Okay. Uh, all right. So the two rats. They're low intelligence, but uh, the situation is evolving. Oh, my. Okay. Uh, so let's see. This is uh, Grimsby. Maybe my character will die before he gets anywhere. Yeah. Uh, just a mere two points. You're fine. I only have three. So. <laughs> <laughs> Close to traveler rules here. <laughs> and... Uh, Oh no! I already I already rolled the hit. That was on Tonstal. That's uh, let's see, Tonstal was struck. And how many hit points does Tonstal have? He's twelve, AC one. Ranger? <clears throat> it's a fighter. Yeah, a fighter. But you, wow. Okay. Well, well. yeah, I got a I got a sixteen dex and banded. No. But you have 12 hit points? I do, yeah. I got a well, you have eight. 19. You have There's eight a now. Because... A da adjustment. Okay. Yep. Uh, yes, well, you, you, you have eight hit points now because uh, the rat leapt up and bit you. Uh, <laughs> that rat bastard. Quite so. All right. Elmer can now melee. Uh, Constal can now melee. Um... There are two giant rats left. So let's get declarations. Tonstall, you gonna you gonna put paid to the rat? Yeah, now that it's pissed me off, I'm gonna get my my uh, spear out and I'm gonna stab it. Okay, uh, sir. Standard. Both of the rats are engaged in melee. If you fire into melee, there is a more than even chance that you may hit a friend. No, at this point, no. Um, I don't suppose I can. Um, Grab the down, uh, grab one of the down guys and drag him back. Oh, absolutely. Yes, so you sir. I'll, I'll start drag, I'll start dragging, dragging, uh, downed comrades out of melee. All right. Okay. Uh, how about Elmer? You're on your feet. You have your one hit point and two giant rats before you. Oh, let's go stick one. All right. Uh, how about Deron? He's going to wipe the other one. Grimsby. Uh, Grimsby is backing away, uh, fighting withdrawal. Okay. Uh, then let's roll initiative. And I think at this point it is, uh, it is Mobius' turn for initiative. Am I right? Did I get that right? It is tied. The two rats. Well, bitely, bitely. Oh, that is. Uh, I'm sorry. Your AC two there, uh, Tonstall. AC one, unless it's attacking me from behind. It is not, and then that will not sufficiently hit. And then this tech is going on. Uh, this will be on Duran. That is not a hit. Counter attacks, please. Uh, that will not hit. Um, no es suficiente. Anyone else to melee? That is a miss. Let me roll. That is a miss. Is it rolling? I can't tell. Yeah, I'm I'm seeing it roll. No no worries. Okay. Uh, any anyone else to melee the giant rat? Rats. Not unless I can do it with a half orc's mostly dead body. <laughs> no. Uh, Elmer, you attacked and missed. Uh, Grimsby did Mark did Grimsby attack? No, Grimsby was fighting withdrawal to get out of the way. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, see, it's rolling way too many dice. <laughs> I don't know what the hell it's doing. <laughs> it rolled three ones. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> that's a, that's a, those of you that can see that, uh, witness it <laughs> three ones in a row. I've never seen anything like that. That is special. 
one of my players has rolled seven twenties in a row. So, good lord, <laughs> all with different dice. Yep. Um, <clears throat> okay, so that ends the round. Um, those of you that are meleeing, are you going to continue to melee? Those of you who have dragged the wounded out of the way, you can have them all the way back to the mouth of the cave if you want. Um, I was going to drag, go grab the next person. I figured I'd be taking them one at a time. And there's currently three people unconscious. Yes. Well, let's see. Man at arms. Man at arms. Man at arms. And Brug. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. you're getting the next man out. Is everyone else meleeing the two giant rats that are left? Grimsky's going to try to help with the man at arm, dragging the man at arms out. Okay. So that leaves uh, Tonstol. Sticky fingers, uh, Deron. Uh, are you fighting the three? Or, or are you three fighting the giant rats? Yeah, I'm gonna try to keep them occupied so that uh, all right, can get them out of there. <clears throat> I'm, I'm sorry, I'm also going to attack the rats. Yeah, all right, Mark, roll initiative, please. That one party will go first. Nice. Uh, let's start with Tonstall, please. Let's see if it'll roll one dice this time. Roll. Hey, one dice. It's a miss, but yeah. it was <laughs> right up there on the Space Hulk set. <laughs> okay, Elmer. Come on, you guys have got it. You're the best around. That's a hit. Roll your damage. <laughs> oh Lord! The, the the rat is is crawling around, dragging its 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 broken back and legs behind it, still fiercely fighting. Uh, Duran. Won't you uh, die? <laughs> I slap the ground and right beside it. <laughs> All right. Oh, first level sucks. This one is on Tonstall. That's a miss. If we're lucky, we can find some gauntlets of ogre power again, and that'll help. <laughs> And uh, that attack on on uh, Duran misses. Um, so you guys are bringing another body. That you brought one body out. You're now bringing the third wounded man back. Um, is everyone continuing to melee? Uh, well, if the thief was moving one, sorry, Mark. I'm assuming you're a thief. Um, if he's moving one, I was moving one. So that's all three back. I'm going to join in with sword now. All right. Um, so that's four of you fighting the two giant rats that are left. Um, uh, Grimsby is, uh, still moving one last wounded in this round. Let's go ahead and roll initiative. And uh, I think Mark roll initiative for the side, please. I just did. Oh, you did? I didn't see it. Doom sword. Go for it. Your turn. Oh, I thought you meant you did just now. Uh, oh, yes, right. it's That's a some sort of stern. My yeah, rat may as well. <laughs> may as well, huh? Okay. Three. Now, someone had asked about uh, do the giant rats or, or do monsters retreat in AD and D, and the answer is yes, they do. They have. Uh oh, they have uh, morale in AD and D. But the question often is, um, you know, how intelligent is the monster? Is it is it uh, is it capable of of actually uh, of of actually uh, you know getting in uh, to its little head that it's it's going to die? And rats have a low cunning as animals go; they almost rate semi intelligent. But there are certain monsters that it takes certain things to do to actually drive them off. Um, we'll just 
leave it at that. So let's see, 16. No, that's actually a miss in this case. Fire would have helped in this instance. I don't know if they were trained for the kobolds or not. And we'll see if this one hits uh, the wrong. That, no, it does not. Counterattacks placed. Okay. Let's see here. Uh, that was, yeah, that's a 10 total, so no. Um, <clears throat> did you actually accidentally throw two dice there? Uh, I, sure, I sure did. Okay. <laughs> you want to wanna, wanna try it again? No advantage dice here in this version of D&D, folks. No advantage dice. Yeah, same. Okay. Uh, disadvantage. Nine, 10 or 11. And I think that that was everyone, right? Uh, Tom Stoll, you uh, you swung on a rat, yes? I did not. Uh, you did not? Well, please. Yeah, for some reason, this, this dice roller is really laggy for me. Uh, will it roll? Did it roll? I haven't seen it yet, but that's not to say it won't. Okay. There it is. Button, but that is a hit. Yay! Okay, one die six plus three damage. You kill it. <laughs> your, <laughs> min your minimum damage destroys the rat. Splat. <laughs> okay. Nice. Uh, uh, there is there is a lone giant rat left. It is already badly damaged, and it seeks to scurry away. You may all attack it at plus four to hit it. Oh, wow. It's still rolling on my page. <laughs> I don't know what the deal is. Uh, yeah, uh, whoever rolled that 16, you finish it off and only had a hit point left. So uh, the rats and the kobolds, <laughs> the rats and the kobolds all lay dead at your feet. Uh, your comrades are down. But they are still breathing. They are just injured. So let's have a quick gander then. Um, so you guys, you bumped off six kobolds. I'm searching them. Okay. Uh, you will have to climb in the pit to search two of them. That's fine. Um, yeah, may as well search the rest. Alrighty. I'm just going to get some pelts off the rats because he's a trapper. So I'll take the pelts. Yeah. Throw their what bodies you, in the pit after you're done. What are you going to sell them for? Copper it up. No, he'll, he can, he can uh, sew them together and make a, make a blanket or something. Okay. Um, what are they, New York rats? Yeah. Rats, rat skin boots are not uh, are, are not unknown. Um, okay, so you recover a total of d6 silver pieces from each kobold, and there are six of them. So that's six d6. Let's go ahead and check that out. Try that again. Tapped it too many times. And roll it. A total of 20 silver pieces. Um, the majority of the rats are just disgusting rats, but as Grimsby picks one up to skin it, you notice that it is actually wearing a silver chain set with rubies. No one notices that. <laughs> I mean, you think you'd notice it when it was, you know, fighting it, but yeah, I know. Grimsy's like, oh, look at that. <laughs> Is it a yes. necklace? Um, well, I mean, for the rat, it was. Oh, so he puts it on his wrist. It's like, oh, a pretty bobble. Okay, so uh, all is quiet. You have injured fellows and some treasure. What do you wish to do? Uh, well, well, let's start 
carrying people out. I so, say we retreat. Yeah, shall we be going back to the keep now? Uh, yeah, I do believe we should be. Get these injured men healed up. I guess I could uh, do some magic on Rogue, and then he could help us with the other two. Cast Cure Lights on Wounds on Rogue. All right, roll a D8. And I'm sorry, you're casting it on whom? Vroog. Oh, Vroog. Okay. Uh, roll roll 1d8 to see if Vroog awakens. Well, I mean, Vroog. Six hit, hit points. Uh, Vroog, you come to and you see uh, a man stepping back, kind of withdrawing his hands from you. The... The, the horrible pain and, and the, uh, the dizziness from the blood loss from the rat bites uh, does okay. not... Uh, Sorry, it, after it, saying my uh, prayer, I put my uh, uh, holy symbol away back in my pouch very carefully. Okay. What happened? Oh, you're injured, my friend. Take it easy. Oh. Be disoriented for a few moments. Too much drink. Ah, that'll do it to you. I don't think he's had enough. Not again. We'll get more when we get back to town. Good. <laughs> All right, so you have two men at arms that are down. Uh, they are unconscious. They are not bleeding out. Yep. Well, let's make stretchers and haul them out. Well, actually, let's let's haul them out a little further and then make stretchers, make stretchers. and then haul them the rest of the way. And there's enough fallen branches and all that you can uh, lash together a uh, trevois or trevois or however you pronounce it. The you know if you want to if you want to drag them back to town. I think we do. All right. And you return to town un, uh, unmolested. Um, you'd only been gone, really, a, a, you know, maybe a grand total of 90 minutes. Uh, you return, the guards recognize you, and the portcullis is raised, the drawbridge is lowered, and you are allowed back into the keep. Uh, carrying a couple of unconscious guys, and you're all covered in you know, scratches and bites and, and, and so on and et cetera. Um, you, you are, uh, you're kind of the talk of the town as you come sauntering back in. Um, the men at arms will require some aid to get back on their feet, but the rest of you, well, I mean, the rest of you require aid also, but um, what do you wish to do? You've returned to the keep. Uh, do you do you want to go to the uh, to, to the Black Main Inn? Um, uh, what 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 is your plan, adventurers? Well, is that, I say we find somewhere. Oh, go ahead. Uh, I was going to ask, so I, I guess I never did get the rat skins. Never mind. Uh, I was going to ask about selling the rat skins. However, I'm kind of injured, and I got bit by some rats. I'm worried uh, about this. So, is there a healer in town? Is there someone, someone who, uh, a medicine woman, a uh, woman who, or a guy, who would, uh, who would know some herbal, po uh, herbal poultices that help me out? Um, there's not an herbalist in town. Generally, for uh, for severe injuries, uh, they they go to the cleric in the local temple. Uh, I did roll, I believe me, I know you guys were eaten on by rats in a dungeon, but fortunately, uh, no one uh, feels, you know, any buboes forming around the rat bites or anything like that. Um, then I just need to clean out the wounds then. Okay. I'm you fine. said you said you were collecting the rat skins. I just assumed that you collected the rat skins. Oh, you, I misunderstood yeah. you. I thought you, I heard you say that they were just icky rats. So I have rat skins. Is there a, is there a furrier in town or someone who might, uh, a tanner type person who might want these skins? So you collected a a a, a total of uh, let me let me see. I think it was nine. 
but I'll, I'll have to double check. Um, I need a, I, I need a better PDF copy of keep on the borderlands than the one I have. Um, or I suppose I could get the physical thing down and look through it, but nobody wants to see flip, flip, flip. Um, see uh so yeah you have a total of of 18 rat skins and the uh there 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 is actually a provisioner a trader here in the keep uh these things are fresh right you know it's, it's blood it's bloody. They're sticky. Uh, he'll have to wash them because there's fleas on them still. Um, Understood. For the lot, he, for the lot, he offers you. Uh, let's see. What what is what is uh, Grimsby's charisma? Tell me. He, he has a thirteen charisma with a so that's plus five reaction. All right. He's an affable sort of person. Okay. Too bad. <laughs> Plus five. Uh, yeah, 18 rat skins. He offers you nine copper. Eh, I'll take it. <laughs> that's that's nine more copper you had than when you walked in here and you're not carrying smelly, bloody rat skins around with you exactly. anymore. Because that, you know, some of them do have like arrow holes and sword holes and everything else in them. Okay, uh, and it, like he immediately like throws them in a in, in a cauldron of oil for curing for curing skins, and is like, you know, <laughs> checking his hands. Uh, and then I'll go off to uh, find my new companions, probably at the inn, I guess. Uh, so your your two injured uh, your two injured men at arms. What uh, what what is your uh, what is your intention to do with them? Because I mean, you just walked back into the keep with two fellows that are fa fairly well known, uh, who are covered with hideous bites. They're bandaged up, uh, but what is what is your intent now, priest? Well, yeah, I can help them out in the morning. Can't get them tonight. Uh, okay. But um, for sure, we're going to put them up in the inn and uh, get them something to eat. And, uh, definitely, uh, yeah. we'll At least they need to go below zero, so they'll be conscious. We're going to be here for a couple days anyways, so I'll, I'll hook them both up eventually. Well, they yeah, didn't they... go below zero, so this could be up in hours, not days. Yeah, they regain consciousness after a day's rest they regain that uh the, you know the the hit points that you do when you rest in good clean conditions uh and that is another hit point regained for all of you um and now it is time it is time because you're back at town to uh give you guys some experience points a uh, question bill sorry um no that's quite all zero, am i confined to bed rest for a week no no Okay. Only if you uh, slip into an actual "I'm losing hit points and dying" comatose, uh, does does that kick in? Okay. Well. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, then the men at arms are fine. And that one hit point returns me to full, so I'm gonna have to drink it off, I suppose. <laughs> Gr Grimsby finds you all and says, "Sorry, lads, didn't get much for those rat skins, but here you go. Each person gets a copper piece. Uh, Vrug, you were injured. You get two. Uh, thanks much, little one. But who are you? Ah, I'm Grimsby. You're Grimsby. you're Vrug. And he says hello yes. in in good good Orcish. Ah, uh, right." I'll speak back in uh, in good Orcish, better than my common. Um, no, well met. I'm a warrior by trade. I'm very disappointed in the way things turned out. 
you should stay away from battle more like I do. I'm a trapper. I like to hunt animals better. Staying away from battle, that would mean dishonor to Vroog. Ah, sounds like you have a little problem there with your morality. Besides... If you fix that, fix that, you might stay alive more, but to each their own. Uh, Besides, if he, wasn't, more. if he wasn't in the front, the rest of us would have to be in the front. And then, well, I'd be on the floor instead of him, and who would want that? Ah, good point. Well, good luck, Mr. Vroog. Mm, you as well. I'll buy him a drink. Ah, thank you. Okay, and the metagame we are not concerned about, um, so I will just ask you this question in the open. Mark, do you tell them about the uh, the bracelet? I wasn't hiding it. I was in the, the one, oh, look what a pretty bubble. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm just curious. Uh, it, it, it is important for purpose of... of he is uh, keeping uh, it. <laughs> <laughs> that I, I leave up to you guys. Um, yeah, leave it up to the rest of them to, to make a stink if they wish. Okay. Now, so you, you have the party thief steal it from the party thief. <laughs> yeah, these guys are going to pickpocket each other. <laughs> hey, yeah, we'll better than us. Keep passing it around. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> it's the Kender mentality, you, you know? Oh, no. You said no. the K word. No. I'm out of the park. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so the XP total for the kobolds, and we'll fire up ye old calculator here to figure out who gets what, although I can do this math in my head, is, well, I'll get to the rats in a second. Um, it's 48 divided across 8 of you, so that's 6 experience points. Uh, damn, we're rich. Getting close to that next level. Wow. Yeah, there you go. Every little bit counts. So that's six experience points each uh, for the giant rats. Now, or for for the kobolds rather. The rats. The rats. Uh, there, there's something. Uh, I think it's Kyrin just below, uh, just below uh, kobold. Okay. Bald. My ass kind of skipped a line and I'm like, 1,700 experience a piece plus 10 per hit point. That's not, no. <laughs> sure, because that sounds about right. Yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah. That's for the 50, for the 5e e set, rather. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I think this is hilarious. Rats are actually worth more. <laughs> they have, they have that potential. Yeah, that potential to cause disease. Uh, so that two, that's 18, that's 36. That's, uh, now I, I got to use a calc here. Not quite five experience points each. All right, so. We get a whole 10 XP total, guys. Uh, so let's see, that's... Um, Uh, that is 26 experience points for the giant rats. There are more of them than I thought. All right. But yeah. Peace. Six experience points for the giant rats. Uh, eight experience, six experience points each for the, uh, for the kobolds. And um, so Grimsby keeps the, the uh, jewelry and doesn't tell the rest of the party about it, correct? Sure. Okay. I'll start off. I'll start off being evil. No. <laughs> yep. The the rest. Of, okay. Because this was announced, I am not. I'm not inserting myself into the game. But just so all the players know, Grimsby announced that he got a piece of jewelry. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna fight him over it. He he can't. He he came in and did his job. All right. I was without him. I'd be basically. dead. <clears throat> Uh, one thing I will say, though, Grisby, um, you take 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 what take what you want. Just bring the bring the next one round for the party split, would you? Of course. Okay, uh, then that is four hundred gold pieces 
uh, or 400 experience points, rather, for Grimsby. And forgive me, Mark, is Grimsby a straight thief? Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, he could be gay, but you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. He's a non-binary thief. No, he's a, he's a straight thief, just thief. Cool. You'll get more than you'll get another D four hit points soon. <laughs> I'll probably roll a one. Hey, all the all you can get. Yeah. All right, gents. Um, so, what do you think? Rest up till tomorrow and head back out. It's gonna take me longer. I'm down five HP, so it's gonna take me a little longer. Yep. All right, well, we have a there's a cleric here. He can cast cure light wounds every four hours if he wants. Yeah, he gives it the first one to uh, first um, uh, man at arms that went down, and then the other one. We should be out of here by tomorrow. Just frantically, like praying and like resting, <laughs> and then pray a little bit more. That's fine. Whenever I'm, I'm sooner the better. Uh, you're 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 being asked in chat, uh, Mark. Uh, do you have a YouTube channel of your own? I don't. What? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm still down three, but uh, I'd prefer to heal up or help. They were in the battle before I came in. Is that three after a night's rest? Yes, you gave me one hit point back, right? So that's right. That's, that's yeah. I took four. All right, so... Is it, is, uh, it, is it one plus con, though? Or is it just one? No, it's just one. Okay, I just wanted just to... One. Yep. Uh, but the, the CLW on the Man-at-Arms has him up and dancing a Furyondian jig, just like that. Well, they're both at six, so... Yep. Nice. After all that. Uh, however, are the Man-at-Arms, we had an original agreement stating when they came in, right, if they came back out with, you know, their brains in their hands and their intestines on the sidewalk, they might not want to come back again. So uh, before we set out again tomorrow, it might be worth asking the two, you know, you guys, you both went down like a sack of potatoes. You've been paid for the month, but, um, you know, how, how, how are you feeling about it? There's no shame in walking. Well, I think they're. I, I think it's a worthy uh, morale check to see how they feel about it. Um, you're doing the talking to them. Uh, what is what is your uh, charisma, sir? Standard. No penalty, no bonus. Um, it's a fat nine. <laughs> In other words, it was it was dangerous and it was painful. Um, we are paid for the month. Uh, we're not going to... Do, yeah, they kind of talk amongst themselves for a minute and said that we're not going to cashier this time, but if we if we go down like that again, even if you bring us back, we'll, we'll probably, uh, probably go back to being caravan guards, to be completely honest with you. Yeah, honesty is always important. And caravan Indeed. guards is a worthy occupation. Have a drink on me. Oh, they absolutely will. They both order. Uh, uh, they 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 both order a uh, an ale. Oh, I was gonna buy them small beers, but that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> you said how much does ales cost? Order before you uh, before you can start. <laughs> Start they didn't buying want honey mead laced with gold or something. <laughs> yeah. What do I owe you, barkeep? Uh, two ales is two electrum, or one gold. So then, gents, um, if these guys go down again, they'll walk. So we've got two options. If they go down again, we just leave them down and we feed them to the crows. Or we keep them in the back as torchbearers. What do you think? Uh, well, I think I, we give them. Uh, if we're if they're taking the risk, we are. I, I I'd hate to leave them behind simply because they said they would not return. Yeah. 
let them take another mission with us, and they can make their decision then. Just keep well, feeding them alcohol. That'll work too. I like your thinking, Brooke. Yeah. Liquid like courage is courage nonetheless. Much. Well, to be fair, that one drink is equivalent of half their month's pay, so. Well, we ready to come back in? And uh, are we going back into the kobolds, though? <clears throat> Grimsby wants to rest up one more day so he's full health. Okay. Um, but then, yeah, he's willing to go with y'all to wherever you want. Well, um, we killed how many kobolds? Six? Six. Six, right. Um, you barely went 30 feet in. How many yeah. more kobolds might be in there? That's the thing. Um, though this time, um, all those with keen eyes, better ears, and a willingness to fall in pits, raise your hand. <laughs> well, well, now we have, have to do. They're the bound to do. The fall in pits part. <laughs> now we have uh, to I fight better after falling in a pit. Really great job. Um, well, we so have whoever a raised more numerous hand. group now. I feel we will make whoever, short order of these creatures. Yeah, whoever, whoever whoever raised their hand, congratulations! You've been promoting to frontline pit finding duty. Um, that's me anyway. Oh, we're dead a while. <laughs> I'll be in the, I'll be job. in the back with the crybaby man at arms. I think we need to buy a pole. Crying about having to do their job. I'll I'll be I'll be in the back with them. Cleric, uh, you want to be in the middle? Yeah, sure. All right, but what about you? Oh, mighty, mighty orc. Um, do you want to be in front, or do you want to be in front behind the thieves? No, I shall follow the thieves. It's such a bad word, this thief. Um, well, we we, we can use the term expert treasure hunter if you like. I find things. That's better. I find things. Well, we let the little ones go first. <laughs> Sorry. At least we'll hear the sounds of them being eaten and know what oh. to expect. <laughs> so mean, Mr. Vrug, so mean. Ah, it's a joke. I know. If, I, if I'm out in front of good ways, pretty quiet. This party's warning cry is, my God, crunch, crunch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, dead. Yeah. One long pull means I'm okay. Two long pulls pull me back. One really long pull and the rope shapes violently and then just goes limp, just turn and leave. <laughs> See, we did that. And we still died. Where, where would you like Damn me fight. to be? I'm capable of taking uh, a hit or two. Uh, may, as well be in the, just... may as well be in the front then. Well, behind the thieves, but you know what I mean. Yeah, I'm. I'll. I'll take front rank. Stand next to Rug. Dwarves and orcs, a long history. Cats and dogs living together, chaos in the streets. <laughs> None of it good. I well, mean, it could I'm be worse. He could be standing man. under the half orc. <laughs> <laughs> I'll fight by your side. So, after all. You showed up to rescue those less worthy, less brave members of the party than myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to inform you, Vrug, that if I had not have put them all to sleep, you would be dead. Don't worry about the summer sun. Vrug just threw some shade. <laughs> Elf talk. Ah! Uh, I can put no, you to sleep that... next time if that'll help. <laughs> sleep! Mark, <laughs> uh, you have a question. Yeah, uh, and that extra day that uh, I, I'm asking that we all take so I can get some better rest. Um, if Grimsky could go around town, he's looking to see if, uh, I, I guess in my my Mark's brain, thieves can't involve like hobo signs and stuff like that. So he's looking around to see if there's any uh, identifying marks of certain individuals seeing if he can make connections give me a uh give me a percentile dice roll 
percentile dice. If I'm percentile using dice. If I'm using technology correctly. Look at that. Oh, that sucks. Oh wow. I hate this dice roller. An O one? We all hate um, this dice roller. You you do you don't see any fresh signs of of the you know the like three little marks. There's a scratch by that window there, but you very clearly see older past marks from like thieves that have been here months and months ago. Yeah. Okay, so, You're like, so that was there through the winter months. That was there through the summer months. That was, you know. Can I uh, very carefully uh, make a little new sign someplace in case uh, people are looking for it? Absolutely. We'll just kind of bundle it up in that and uh, say that, you know, you, you, you kind of smear just a little bit of pigeon guano just so to indicate, uh, you know, here is Grimsby gone to Caves of Chaos. Thanks. Um, while the rest of the party is sitting around, some of them literally sitting around, uh, can I have a talk with the local residents and see if there's anything going on in the caves that they would like help with? Anything, you know, did somebody's kid get kidnapped? Is their dog missing? Uh, do they, you know, lose their favorite pa pair of shoes? You know, that but of kind course of thing. You can. But of course you can. Let's see what the what, what are the rumors? All right. If only because he's a better talker than I am. I'm the brain, he's the mouthpiece. All right. Come on, cleric, we're NPC shopping. All right. I put on my best robes. <laughs> I'll let you guys go on your own. I don't tend to do well with uh, recruiting efforts. Somebody had a 13 charisma. Well, I still think he has, has, I still think he has a higher dwarf. charisma. I'm all for that. Let's do that. Now pull this up a seat at the bar. This is one of those times when I am going to roll behind the screen and rob you all and the viewers of player agency. Uh, well, it's commonly known, and you know, a couple of couple of uh, uh, folks. Uh, some uh, there, there's uh, one of the blacksmith apprentices says, uh, uh, "Well, good, my lord. Uh, it, have you guys told anybody about what you fought, or did you just roll into town and like? Are, are you are you spreading the room?" I assume the locals know there are kobolds. Yes, uh, but uh, the apprentice says, Well, good, my lord, there are indeed kobolds in the cave, but it is also rumored that there are goblins and orcs there as well. Fearsome creatures, all. There's a little bit of inside mm -hmm. baseball. But does anyone need anything? Um, well, the trader has heard that there are piles of magic armor in the southern caves, and he would love to get his hands on some and pay handsomely if he could, uh, if he could get his hands on a magic shield or, 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 uh, uh, a, a suit of chain, Yeah, I think we just want that for ourselves, though, but I'll consider it. The Cobalt Cave was on the north side, right? It was. Yes, it was. And uh, the other ex-Smith apprentice who is going with him, because it's early in the day, pipes up and says, yes, but what a danger. It's not just the monster. I've heard every cave entrance is trapped. And uh, most other folks, the best you can, the, the, the best you hear from them on that given day is that the, uh, the, 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 the caves are, are regarded as highly dangerous. You do, however, see... Uh, in the town square, um, 
that there is a uh, that there is a goods merchant, uh, Findel Roth, who has been missing. There's, you know, a, a fairly good drawing of him there. Uh, Findel Roth, the merchant, was yeah. was kidnapped on the road. It is suspected, and may have been taken to the caves. And there is. Uh, uh, the rumor is that he will reward anyone who is able to uh, recover them. I elbow uh, Sir Average a little bit there. I start laughing. I'm like, uh, well, that trap wasn't certain turning out to be true. Well, they, uh, yeah, and well, he wasn't in the pit. We we know that. So, um, or at least so, if if he if he was taken over that way, but um, also. Uh, no, no signs out for kobold ears or goblin ears. No, no, uh, no, no, no bounty on orc heads or anything like that. I'm, we, we don't need to be scalping anyone. Uh, yeah, no, no, uh, no, no bounty. I mean, hey, if you bring evidence that you, uh, you know, verifiable facts that you have slain everything in those caves, you you would expect there would be a, a fairly large reward. That's what I'm saying. Is I just didn't know if there was a you know if I should start collecting ears and turning them into the guard captain or anything like that. Uh, I mean they they don't they don't ask for anything specific. Just again, you know, at some point in the future, if you clear them all out. Um... All right. Well, I guess we can let them know, but. Well, yeah. Uh, well, and I guess for each cave we'll clear out if we if we clear out if if we clear out a whole cave, um, for each one we clear out or that we feel that we've cleared out, um, you know, the least we can do is bring their leader's head and see if they'll take that. Um, small rewards along the way will help us get there. Besides, who wouldn't want a goblin king's head on a pike? There you go. Well, that's what I mean. Okay, so um, armed with that information, do you wish to? Uh, do you wish? Do you want to explore the countryside? Do you wish to poke around town a bit, or just head straight to the caves? Pardon? After having healed up for a couple of days, let me be clear about that. I say we go back into the caves, particularly before the uh, kobolds can do anything new and nasty. Yeah, I vote we get back there before they replenish. I had my druthers, it would have gone yesterday morning, but hey. Um, there was stopping you from going. Well, yeah, there was. About 12 other people not being behind me, or more importantly, in front of me. <laughs> And you made your choices. Um, <clears throat> Bill, do, do Brug and um, and Tonsil, while they're drinking at the bar, uh, happen to overhear anything from the barkeep or otherwise? All right. Uh, there are a few people uh, bumming around, as it were. Let's, uh, you know. And if you talk yourselves up, I mean, the, the, the men-at-arms have already said... Uh, you know, yeah, we were we were waylaid by kobolds and giant rats, and then you know they have to explain what a kobold is, and you know it's a rat the size of a dog, and and that sort of thing. Um, I suppose both me and the dwarf get louder the more we drink and the more we talk. Okay. I mean, I had no idea. I don't want to speak for Tom School. I, I tend to listen more than speak, but yeah, I'll uh, I'll grunt my ways <laughs> in, a, yeah. in a sense or in a sense, depending well, on. You, you're with a guy who likes to talk, so yeah. it's a match made in heaven. <laughs> well, nobody uh, nobody survived from it, but one of the small merchant uh, uh, wagon trains. By by rumors, there was a fair maiden amongst them. And she was captured and hauled off to the caves. And another uh, another fellow adds, and it must have been one of the orc tribes. You know, there's more than one orc tribe in those caves. That's the only thing that keeps them from overrunning us. Is they're always at war with each other. 
been fighting. It always happens, at least in my experience. Is there a reward for this maiden? Oh, not that not that we know of, uh, good sir. It's uh, it's again, it's it's just rumored that uh, that that she was there. Uh, none here in the keep uh, know of her, but uh, there there were some in in the the scant bit of of goods that were found on the road. There there were some ladies' garments. So clearly they. There, there must have been a fair maiden with them. Fair once. Um, but yeah, that's we'll that's all. That's out. all you. Have they? Have they? Has? Do you know the? The group or have they moved on um who are you asking this the the well the guy that's speaking about the the maiden being captured oh no there were no uh there there, there were there were no um well i hesitate to say survivors i would just uh, there were none that were not uh that were not taken away oh ah uh, damn Okay. We'll we'll keep our eyes open for it. Hopefully they're not uh past. Even if they are Tunstall, there may still be a reward. That's this is true. And it's a worthy it's a worthy thing to do. Well they die. They live. It matters not. Let's save the princess. All right, so we pick up uh, Grimsby. Okay. All right. And, uh, the two men at arms are all healed up. Hopefully, we we'll at arms pump them up and get them ready. You can do it, guys. I've got faith in you. Did I tell you guys the men at arms' names last week? I have them on my sheet. I have Finkel and Thrud. That's right, Finkel and Thrud. I was hoping I, I, for Leo and Nurm again. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I should have gone Leo and Nurm. Yeah. Yeah, for a bit of nostalgia, but I no. should have said Bill and Ted. Uh, so Finkel and Thrud, uh, I, I was perhaps a bit hasty giving non-player character uh, Men at Arms actual names, but um, so where? Uh, let's see. Let's have a quick gander as you ride on down the road. Your shadows taller than your souls. I'd hope they're taller than our souls. We'd be, you know, walking on them. Yes. Uh, so nothing untoward happens while you're uh, while you're on your way to the caves, and so. Well, while we're walking to the caves, I want to like talk with the party a bit and ask them like, so you guys want to go in the same cave? You guys want to try a different cave? The kobolds are bad enough. Let's start with them and move on. Mm -hmm. Surely they're alerted now and they're ready for battle. But we know where I the shall traps drink are. Their blood. Right, well, you know where. We, well, we know where a single pit is, and they were pretty alert and ready once. Once someone fell in that pit, anyway. Well, oh. the thieves must bypass that. Oh, but and wait! Then I shall rend these creatures limb from limb. You, you have a pit that needs crossing. Did anyone bring a, a, a stout plank? Maybe we should pick one up before we leave the keep. Was it? Well, was it a joke? Go I, back. I, I had a out of character was it a choke point it was there no way to go around it the the kobolds crossed uh and the rat well the rats just came across the top of the pit probably not heavy enough to trigger it the kobolds came at you from the right as you looked up the corridor and they kind of cut across the corner so there's at least a gap of a couple of feet that the pit doesn't completely cover okay but that is 
that's a challenging thing if we're in combat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, we, hopefully they don't have bows. <laughs> Do you always worry this much, Dwarf? Vroom oh, I, I don't across. worry for myself. I, I and just Vroom will throw others. you if you wish. <laughs> Hmm. Um, if you can, yeah, please you... do. Nail, nail the pit, nail the pit shut, and we'll move on. Well, do you have anything to nail it shut with? Do you not? No. Okay then. I um, don't normally carry pit shutting nails. Well, have a have have a half dozen iron spikes then. You need. Oh a no, 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 no! I'll take them when I need them. Thank you. I, you I can't carry them. Much. They're so heavy for me when you need them. Yeah. Surely thieves such as yourself have encountered these sorts of pits before. I've made some pits. I don't still usually carry nails to nail them shut. Well, I don't care what you carry. I wish to purchase it as a couple of copper pieces. Yeah. Yeah. Just letting you guys know that. Use that rat money you made. Well, you see... I, I travel light. You see what I, I'm wearing? I don't have space for a bunch of nails and pythons or pitons, however you posh folk call it. So, no, well, you carry I'm them for me posh, and I'll use them. But that's a mighty shiny bracelet you got there. Oh, you want it? No. Then, it's my bracelet. Thank you very much. Uh, I don't know if anybody else does. Well, no, I don't want it either, it. but I do notice that uh, that was part of party treasure which means it should have been part of party loot. So next time that happens, you might be looking at broken fingers. Oh, Make sure it doesn't what's all, happen what's again. All the, what's all the madness here? I've had yeah, it for yeah, days. Yeah. You should have said something three days ago. Yeah, I showed I it to you all in the bubble, and then I, I kept it. Nobody is telling us. We're like just that. saying, don't let it happen again. Oh, uh, yeah, no, I know. You're a halfling not. wearing a woman's bracelet. <laughs> you, and, oh, it looks very nice, doesn't it? He doesn't want to be I'm called I'm going to send it to me, Gran. Y'all start laughing. I'm going to send it to me, Gran. The man at arms on the wall, watching you t- t- watching you all stand there and argue, yelp, calls down, in or out, my lords. Ow! No. Let's go. Let's go piss right. in the wind. Windless is, uh, windless is rotated. Inner gate opens, you all step in, inner gate closes, outer gate opens, you step out, drawbridge is lowered, you cross, drawbridge is raised, and presumably the outer gate is closed also. See you when we get back, Frank. Yep. Frank waves. Uh, this is the keep, right? Not the caves. Right. Okay. Yes. I just want to make sure because I'm like, wait a minute. I mean, uh, this if, is not if, so good. if the caves have their own doorman, that'd be great. I'm going to use that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to okay. set up like an intelligence of ten, like an intelligence ten troglodyte, just right out there in like a little door booth. They'll take tickets. All right. Uh, nothing ill befalls you on your way to the uh, on your way to the. Um, to the caves proper so you find yourselves once again nothing has changed there's the rather considerable track from when you were dragging your wounded comrades out on their on their uh travois so um are you going back to the cobalt there should do i think that's the plan yep yeah they know what's there <laughs> uh, I, I guess, unfortunately, I probably will need to uh, do some scouting. If all you people in your metal armor, you're so noisy. You stay back here for a second. Want a python? No. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, takes his pipe, he takes his pipe out, knocks it off, puts it into his, his vest pocket. Uh, Grimsby it was. Grimsby, yes. Yes, that's why we brought you along. Don't take anything that belongs to us this time. Sticky I never fingers. take. You I never him. take. I find. Let's go. And and he cautiously enters the cave. And then uh, what? Just so, just so everybody knows, what uh, Elmer's behind him, or alongside him, or I, if Elmer can those... keep keep quiet. It, 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 here's a here's a question. 
do gnomes also have the so far ahead you get better surprise? Um. You know, I have not played a gnome uh, character in so very long that I don't remember if they do or don't. Um, I don't think so. I was, I, was hoping to use, I was hoping to use the halfling ability to be 90 feet ahead, not in metal armor, to get a plus two basically on surprise so he can scout and run away quick. Right, and the gnome's got imprevision. I mean, I, I do too, yeah, 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 but I'm yeah, loud. Yeah, 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 the exactly. gnome backs you up by like 30 or 40 feet or something and then as long as it doesn't interfere line. with my ability to, to surprise That's fine. yeah i'll just stay back far enough where it doesn't mess with your <clears throat> and then the front length of rank of uh fighters will stay far yep. enough back yeah yep. does that make sense so it's probably 60 30 30 and then the cleric behind the fighters and then um the fighter magic user and the men at arms yeah the rear. and then the two useless hirelings and I think I think for the initial one, I just want to scout out past the pit and see what is there, and come back and report so we can figure out which. Like if there's multiple directions, we can figure out which one to scout next. Type stuff. Wasn't it like a T? Like it went yes. left and right? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so um, you're aware of where the pit is. Yep. I will. I will keep to the side carefully. Uh, the pit is at the T, and if you ignore it, you're a fool. So, of course, I pit T the fool. Um, are you going left or right? Um, I, I, my infravision, my eyes are glowing. Um, looking, looking to the right, what do I see? Uh, do I see, like, glowing spots? Looking, looking to the right, uh, you can see what appears to be uh, on the north side, as you look to the right, um, which, uh, uh, yeah, on the north side. So as you look down the hole, it'll actually be on your left. But um, there is what appears to be an abandoned guard post, a couple of discarded spears, knocked over stools. Um, the hallway goes 20 feet and then looks to curve away to the southeast. And it curves at such an angle that you can't really see beyond the 25 foot or so uh, marks. Okay. I, I'll turn and see what was to the left. Again, with my infravision. Uh, to the left. Uh, it takes you a few moments because you, you do have dim sun shining in behind you. Um, dim sunlight, I should say, in case somebody wants to make a Chinese food joke. Um, but looking to the left, uh, the hallway goes about 20 feet and opens into a larger room that is at least 20 feet deep. I'll go, I'm gonna randomize myself. I'll go to the left. Okay. Um, you carefully step around the pit trap. Uh, are you attempting to move silently? Uh, yeah. Do All right. Do you wanna roll that or shall I? I, I yeah things like fine trap move silently that sort of thing that is I roll. Okay. I'm at okay. 37 percent. Uh, Grimsby steps into the I into the uh, the hallway and you see him kind of gingerly picking out places to step and it is always on a twig or a pile of leaves that have been blown in step crunch crunch shuffle crunch step step. Awesome. Um, so. Uh, going left, Grimsby, you see, uh, that this widens out into a, um, into a room that is full of, of, uh, boxes and crates, various things hanging from the ceiling by hooks on chains, that look distressingly a lot like uh, longer parts of the human body. However, um, let's see. Give me just a second here. Once again, dealing with a not great PDF. I don't think this thing even has an index, but I could be wrong. Uh, no, it does not. Uh, very helpful. 
Um, there are there are crates and and a large barrel is here in one corner. This appears to be um, fairly standard, uh, fairly standard supplies. Um, okay, then I'll make my way back to the party. Okay, and if I survive that, um, this is what I found, folks, me lads. Um, to the left, their storeroom with uh, some grisly uh, hanging meats. Uh, to the right, uh, seems to have been a guard post. Perhaps that's where the kobolds that you fought were from. And then it goes out of sight. I didn't go any further. Uh, but I didn't see any more kobolds. Shall we try to get across the pit? Uh, if I, if I l nail the pit shut, it'll make a, quite a lot of noise. How did the meat smell? Uh, it looked like human meat. Is that of your interest? No. Then I don't care I how was, it's smelled. I was wondering about the rottenness of it. Ah, good point. Do kobolds like fresh meat or rotted meat? Uh, this looked like it had kind of been uh, roughly cured. Like maybe smoked. It's caravan um, meat. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, question: Does uh, does who does somebody carry a torch? I guess uh, probably Darren would. Yeah, I have a couple. Right, because he doesn't have improvision, right? So correct. He has to see. It. I think I think everybody else has improvision. Yeah, kidding. my improvision screwed. <laughs> it's so, fine. But, but again, uh, trying to figure out: Should we go to the left to sort of secure the location? And check it out, or should we go to the right down the hall and find out where the, uh, perhaps where there's more kobolds, and check the storeroom later? What you you saw in both directions, right, thief? Yes. What do you Did you recommend? see the storeroom was a dead end? The storeroom appeared to be a dead end. No, that's not going anywhere. Let's move on. Okay. Uh, so you'll have, and, and he'll he'll explain how to gingerly go around the pit to make sure you don't trip it. Um. Uh, so we should get ourselves all into that corridor first, probably, before we move on. So you did lock up that pit? No, it would make too much noise. Right, so it's it's open. And, yeah. Right. So, so you explain tre how we could Tread start. carefully. Uh, Go around the edges. Yep, so it sounds like... It sounds, it, like in, boys. it sounds like what we want to do is we want to move in to the right and reform ourselves there carefully not going across the pit or carefully circumventing the pit as Grimsky can explain how type thing. Sound like a plan? Yes, and you'll continue up ahead. Yeah, once we get ourselves there, yes, we can. Then I'll move ahead and scout more. Let's but I, I want you well. all backing me up. Let's move up to the guard post. Rube is always here. Okay. I'll, uh, okay. I'll go make there. sure to you know, make make sure our men at arms don't fall behind or or you know trip or fall if I can. Uh, I apologize in advance to our audience of little network issues. So, Bill, we are going to move. We're going to move uh, as uh, the whole party basically move up. Uh, to the right-hand side, reform ourselves in that spot. Grimsy carefully points out how to get around the pit. Uh, so hopefully no one will fall in. Um, and once we form up, then Grimsy will go scout out ahead again. Okay. And, um, and, I, I, and, and Duran and the men-at-arms probably have torches, so they'll be there will be torchlight now getting in the way of things. My torch in the tinderbox out. Yep. Okay, uh, you're formed up. I just want to pause to answer uh, a quick question here. The uh, K5K asks, do we do theater of the mind? You see no mapping tool in use. Uh, yeah, I just can't get to grips with uh, mapping software by and large. When we do go to a map type situation where I'm going to break out some, uh, some miniatures and so on, we'll have cameras and lights on the table and some dwarven forge uh, for the appropriate portion of the dungeon crawl. Um, but for right now, we are strictly theater of the mind, uh, the K5K. 
All right. Um, so you follow the curve of the hallway around to the southeast, Grimsby. Mm -hmm. Greetings, Light Mane. I, again, attempting to be quiet. We'll see how that works this time. We'll see how that works this time. <laughs> um, uh, he's quieter this time. He's quieter. Um, you can still hear him, but he's, he's a little bit quieter. Grimsby, you follow the curve of the corridor around perhaps 50 feet before it evens out and starts to go due east. At that point, on your left-hand side, there is a hallway that goes north. The tunnel continues ahead of you, and you can tell that it opens into a large room from which you hear a, a lot of noise. Uh, and there's actually a little bit of dim light from there also. Um, they, uh, you, there's maybe kind of a brazier cooking food. Um, you, you can, you can just make out the shapes of cobalts kind of moving around and so on. And they... apparently don't notice you uh i will put, uh go down that left hand passage just to scout it out a little bit what's down there moving again trying to be quiet uh it goes north approximately 20 feet and you have, uh, then it splits and goes to the east and to the west. And it is a T intersection, by the way. It does not, uh, it, it does not um, continue going north. Okay. Um, I will attempt to get back to the party without attracting attention. All right. Uh, party. Um, you are all uh, astounded because you see Grimsby approaching you. No noise. No noise at all. He, he is silent as the still air as he approaches you. Ro rolled an 03 on your move silently there. Fantastic. Um, I, I quickly explain, you know, curves down. Uh, straight ahead, there's a large room with lots of cobalt in it. Uh, perhaps that's their, their mess hall. Uh, to the north, uh, is short corridor, it splits into two. I didn't go any further. I wasn't going to press my luck. Um, but perhaps uh, we form up and go straight into that big room, knowing that we may get someone behind us. So we'll keep uh, keep our back also also strong. Sound like a plan? Where, where would they come from behind us? There's a there, near near the big room. There's a passage that goes uh, to the left. Oh, that, splits into, okay. that splits also uh, shortly there, left, right. I didn't go further. I, being pessimistic, I'm assuming there are more cobalts up there. Well, this may be a good point for us to. Uh, 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 you, you went a little uh, dim on us, Sarah. I wasn't able to hear you. Okay. <laughs> I, I said this might be a good time for one of our man of arms to post for a sentry point at that at that entryway, the hallway. Yeah. Well, is there a way when we enter that mess hall um, to just we can just block the the uh, return area right that 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 area behind us with the men at arms. That's why they're in the back. So we'll just we'll we'll, put, we'll post both of them there because that's where I fully intend to be. Yes, we have a brave band in the rear. So, Sir Standard, did you uh, prepare yourself for your arcane arts? If you want, if you want me to sleep all of them now, I will sleep all of them now. Oh, if you can do them all, that'd be great. If you could do some, that would help. Uh, that all depends on how. Stupidly gullible they are. I intend to run in and rip and tear. But oh I yeah, I want, to get, I want to kill some kobolds. That's all I yeah. want to do. I'll you follow in. I have no you. intention of holding back. I have done my job scouting. Y'all can go forward now. 
I will bring up the rear. Rip and tear until it is done. And <laughs> that's it. All right. Well, um, <clears throat> barring any other opinions, I suppose uh, I suppose the idea would be for the front rank uh, fighters to creep slowly forward to the corner and then jump around it and run in. At least that's what I plan to do. Yeah. Sounds like a fair plan. Explain to your dear old DM again what you're doing, because I should point out the hallway that he's talking about that runs straight into what appeared to be a large open common room is just that. It is straight. There is no corner or what have you. Oh, I thought you had to go up a little bit and then turn the corner to the left and get no. into it. Okay. No, so it's just straight ahead. Yeah. So I could just like barrel there, there, in there right there now. A, there is a passage to the north, up a ways down, uh, right when the cur southeast curving hallway starts to straighten out. But it, but the the hallway continues on to the east to the open area. How, how far is it? You said it's ninety feet from the T, or uh, I didn't actually. Okay. How big is that gap? I'm sorry. How, how big is what gap? The between that that T intersection of the hallway and that large room. Oh, you don't. You're you're not sure. Um, well, a gnome. Uh, a, a gnome. Let's see. I'll I'll be a mensch about it. Let's see. A gnome. <laughs> Do you think it's about fifty, sixty feet from from the intersection to uh, to to the uh, to to the large open common room? Okay, so I could conceivably motion off to the cleric to stay where he's at with his light source and creep forward <clears throat> enough to use infravision to see what the gnome had seen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know, I'll follow. I'll, I'll follow with you. Before yeah, all that happens, I want to go before in the group, the center of the group, and say a little prayer, bless the party. Actually, literally okay. bless the party. All right, you cast bless on the party. Oof, all right. Is that dropped right here? Yeah, that, because that matters. Hmm? Does it does it go along with people that were in the area of effect, or is it literally this yeah. spot is now blessed? It's only the cleric, so it's it's, it's, right, it's only the spot. six feet around me. Oh, so you move and the bless area it moves right. with you. Okay. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. All right. But if it's 60 feet around you, that's not too bad. No, it's six. It's six. Not 60, six. Six inches? No, no, no. It's five by five. It's a oh, five gotcha. by five space. Oh. Right? Yep. For bless? Right. So it's, what, 50? It's five. Internal would be 50, 50 feet by 50 yeah, feet. It'd be, it'd be, it'd be 25 by 50. 25. Yes. A cube of bless. Yeah. A bless atinous cube. Oh, really, Bill? <laughs> really? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, my my yeah, sleep see, has my, <clears throat> my sleep has a it ring. It says the point it's cast on. Oh, and that's so it's a, This one's an area of effect, but it's it's ranged as well. So, like, he has to put it on a spot somewhere. Right, and he's got up to 60 feet to, to select, right, within right. his field of view. With what, within what he can see. I mean, I mean, I guess he could probably cast it on himself, <laughs> you know, as the as the target. You and know, get but I don't, party. I don't know. Uh, just reading it myself. Yeah. Cast it on yourself, get everybody in the whole party. Uh, sleep has a range of 40 for me. So you'll 40. probably have to advance, but you could do that after we get in the room. Yeah, I could always do it once we get there. Yeah. Correct. Yes, All right, priest with the light. Here we go. Stay behind a bit. Mm -hmm. We will creep forward. Once we can see them, we will destroy them. Be safe, my friends. Okay. Um... So your little, your your uh, Sally goes forth. 
you make it to about the intersection and you can see that creeping up in your direction is a group of easily uh, eight to 10 male kobolds. Uh, they see you and start chittering and screaming and draw weapons and prepare to do battle. Um, let's just make sure here because they weren't surprised. Nor are you. Um, How far back from the T is the trap? Um, you're talking about the the pit trap at the yes. at the end. Yes, the one we That's, know of. Yeah. It's it's you know there there's a northwest curving hall and then that runs like twenty feet before that happens. So it's a good distance behind you. It's a it's, it's a good eighty or ninety feet behind you. Okay. How many kobolds were there? Uh, you think you see maybe a dozen? more it's hard to tell but yeah there there's there's a lot of them uh let's get declarations uh kevin what is tom still doing how, how far away are they from us right at this point you have just passed the intersection uh they look to be about uh 30 feet down the hallway Okay, I guess I'm gonna charge the front rank and charge with the them in. Yeah. Okay. Uh, melee spear, sir. Standard. Uh, I will cast sleep, so I will be able to sleep four d four of them. Sleep in heavenly peace. Um, how about Elmer Sticky Fingers? I hate kobolds. I'm charging. Charging with a capital C. I love it. Uh, how about uh, Daron? I guess uh, it's time for that uh, bless. I put it uh, as far as I... I'll cast it on the spot as far as I can ahead of me. Okay. Uh, Mark, what about Grimsby? Um, he's going to keep an eye on the the, uh, the that passage that went north to see if we're going to get surprised from there. Okay. Uh, Vrug, uh, your lead elements have broken, uh, from, uh, rank and are charging away. What does Vrug do? No, oh, I'm absolutely charging. Today you die! So I charge okay. forth with uh, my, uh, well, longsword. Charge, your charge, of course, uh, you have a charge bonus. Um, they are armed with crap weapons, so you will actually strike first with yours. So, uh, I need three, uh, attack rolls, and let me see. Before you guys do that, let me, uh, let me try to re-roll or, or reload the dice roller page to my audience. If I disappear for a minute, bear with me. And there it's back. Okay. Uh, I did not drop off the internet. Yay. Technology. Okay. Um, uh, let's, uh, let's do your charge tonstal. Okay. I'm using a different browser and it looks like it's better. All right. So that's a 14, 14, 15 with the charge. Um, that 12 plus, yeah, 12 plus yeah. my, Yes, uh, so that will hit. Uh, do your damage. 1 die 6 plus 3. Alright, so it's 6 points of damage. You slay the kobold. Um, Elmer, the hated kobold. Ah, your gnomish bloodlust, which you're a gnome, so it's about like a, you know, a K-cup. Of bloodlust. Um, go ahead and make your attack. Well, that's a 20 with oh, a one Yeah, four. you just transfix one of these things with your weapon blow. Roll your damage. <clears throat> Slain outright. All right. Uh, I like it. Vrug. Twelve, thirteen. Uh, doing that edge case stuff to me again. Let me double check. Um, 
I think you're muted, Doom Sword. Yeah. You're still muted, Doom Sword. <laughs> I should have added a plus two to that die roll in the die roller because I oh, have a plus two melee bonus to attack. So the total effect is plus three, which makes that twelve or fifteen. All right. Apologies. Uh, yeah. No, that's okay. That that should be absolutely sufficient. Fifteen. That is a hit. All righty. Ah, that's still four points of damage. That kobold is slain. Um, we've the 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 party is charged, and the way charges work in in AD and D for those of you out there who don't know, charges are executed before. Um, melee combat or even initiative is rolled because they're just charging ass over tea kettle. Uh, however, this means that they could also be swarmed by kobolds if if the uh, kobolds win initiative. Um, let's start uh, let's let's start with uh, Tonstall roll initiative because I know what the kobolds are about to do. How many are left now? Oh, lots, lots and lots. Uh, that's going to be two cobalt attacks on each of you who came charging up. So uh, we'll start with Tonstall. The cobalt one issue? Yes, they do. Did I lose very... my dex bonus from the charge? I'm sorry, do you lose what? My dex bonus from the charge? Uh, you lose shield bonus okay. from the charge. So I'm AC2 then. Okay. Uh, well, those those would have been misses anyway. Um, and uh, this next is on Elmer. AC5. Uh, that is a pair of hits. Ouch. And you will take five points of damage. <laughs> Dang, I always wind up being down to one. Slash. <laughs> they like they jump on you. You're not much taller than they are, but they're just shanking you with daggers as you're, <laughs> as you're trying to fight them back. Uh, and the last two, the last two on drug. I've got a four shieldless AC. The 16 might have gotten you. I'm kind of doubtful. Let me double check. Uh, let's see. Up to one minus one, which is what they are. Uh, no, it did not. Um, so that finishes that. Um, from somewhere behind you, you hear prayers being shouted. You hear magic spells being shouted. Uh, no more melee happens. You guys are plugging the hall. Give me a roll of four die six, if you would, please, TK, for Sir Standard Sleep Spell. And I'm guessing you're directing this so it won't uh, sleep ball your uh, your party members. Um, uh, sadly, it's 4d4, not 4d6. I'm sorry, yeah, 4d4. Okay, I thought you can give me 4d6. That'd be great. Uh, um, I will. Nice roll. What? Uh, why do I always roll so wow. badly? All right. Um, badly? That's uh, that's actually nine on forty-six. That's slightly better than average. It's uh, never good enough. <laughs> uh, yeah, all of the kobolds uh, in the vanguard fall over. However, uh, there is a great ruckus coming from the common room, and you can hear the sound of more kobolds starting to move forward, but they will not be here in this round. Uh, Kevin, what is Ton still doing? Oh, and you're also, you're, you are all blessed now. Okay. Um, th so they're, they're another 30 feet away. Is that, is that? Yes. I'm going to charge the first one that comes out of the door. Uh, you can't charge, can only we'll execute. Yeah. Yeah. We'll run up every, there. Every, yeah. All right. So you're moving in this round, I guess. Right. Uh, yes. Sir Standard, uh, what are you doing in the new round? I will start applying arrows to the problem. Gotcha. Um, Elmer Sticky Fingers, you shove these kobolds back, uh, and they fall asleep immediately. 
Um, can I like uh, finish those ones that are sleeping off? Yes, absolutely. You can coup de gras uh, one every round. Okay, that's what I'm doing. Uh, Daron, what are you doing? Looking at the gnome going, savage little bastard, ain't he? <laughs> We're not all about but we're not all about rescuing jackalopes from snare traps and collecting for the winter. <laughs> uh, but seriously, what is Duran doing other than staring there in mute horror as as he uh, as he punch daggers each one of these guys? I'm uh, looking on down the hallway, making sure nothing's coming from that end. Got your eyes open. Okay, uh, Grimsby. Uh, Grimsky's going to actually uh, scout ahead a smidge up that uh, north passage just to make sure he knows if anyone shows up. Okay. Uh, and finally, Vrug. Vrug will not be outdone by a dwarf. I'll, I'll run up there with him. All right, so you guys are moving in this round. Uh, then let's go ahead and roll initiative. Sir Standard, please roll initiative for the side. Absolutely. Big roll. Let's see. Five. That is five oh, for me. It's yours. It is a tie. Wow. Wow. What a great time for a tie. Those of you moving up, you move up, and then there's just a huge, the, the, well, huge, there's like seven kobolds that spend their round moving. And you can see more kobolds, like, Cobalt runts, uh, and and uh, there's like a large group of angry-looking uh, kobolds in the back, but they're not attacking yet, uh, or they're not moving up. It's just these that have uh, moved up. So you guys basically move up together. Nobody can fight there. Uh, missile fire is happening as they're moving. So go ahead and take your two shots, uh, sir. Standard. Absolutely. Thwok. Thwok. Um, and let's see. The, Can I hit anything? Uh, well, that 11 plus 1 is a 12. I still don't think that's going to do it. Uh, let's see what the good book says. That would be an AC 8. Uh, that will unfortunately miss. It just kind of sails into the room and you hear arrow clatter off something and the other just, just sort of parts. Uh, so Mark Grimsby is moving to the north of the hall. Uh, you look, you, you look to the left, that is to the west. And, uh, that room, there is a stout looking door, uh, that is, that is closed. Looking to the right, the hallway goes down, uh, some distance. Let's see. It, uh. Hang on, come on, PDF reader. Now he was blessed, right? So he got. Did he get a, a mod on that? Well, that plus the plus one that would have taken it to an AC seven, but I don't. I still don't think that would have hit. Okay. All right. So you think? Uh, yeah, you can't tell. It's it's like eighty or ninety feet, maybe uh, to the west. Mark. Okay. Yeah, uh, Grimsby is trying to maintain silence as he moves up i presume yes okay um yeah your infravision is what 60 feet yeah yeah it just fades into darkness okay and nothing is uh, nothing is is coming out of the darkness at you you'll uh, we'll go back to the rest of the group all right I think rather than get involved into another swirling melee, we're going to go ahead and uh, call it because we have another round of combat coming up next week, next Tuesday. We'll all be here uh, and we'll find out, has the party uh, kicked the hornet's nest? And are they about to, uh, are they about to encounter, you know, more than they had, uh, more than they had uh, uh, counted on or will they be victorious and, and rip and tear until it is done. Uh, come back next week and find out, guys. And if you haven't hit the subscribe button, 
and the bell icon for notifications. That's the best way to find out because a lot of times people come to me and they're like, how often do you do these? And I'm like, dude, every week, <laughs> like for almost a year now, every week. So uh, please, please do, do uh, join us again next week. If you're not already signed up, uh, that would be great. Uh, of course, I would like to thank all of my players, uh, Kevin, TK, uh, Baron Von Headbanger, Mobius, Mark, and Doomsword. Thank you all so much for joining this uh, this evening, and thank you everyone out there in the audience. It was it was a lot of fun. And we'll uh, we'll see you all next time. I'm gonna I'm gonna plot what my kobolds are about to get up to. So. Uh, until then, everyone, be good to each other. Uh, I cannot thank you all enough. Have a wonderful evening. And um, we will... Uh, wait a minute. There we go. Uh, we, will, we will see you all next time, yes? Yes. Yes. Yep. Uh, but until then, my friends, I ask you the ever-important question of the evening, and that is... Have you seen my owl bear? Have you seen my owl bear? Here's to all the weirdos everywhere in the woods and in the air. Have you seen my owl bear? Should I shave off all my hair? Bobs are all around, some live in tunnels underground. Some are fat, some are rich, some are sleeping in a ditch. Can you ride a crooked horse without a saddle way off course? Naked as a toad, all the way to Smoky Joe's. Have you seen a little creep driving fast in his little green jeep? He smells like fish and brandy, but his rotten teeth look dandy. Take me to the show, I don't care if fast or slow. From action flicks to dancing dicks, just take me to the show.